All right, does anyone have any reasonable questions? I didn't say there wasn't any unreasonable questions, young lady. I asked if anyone had a reasonable question. You read into my question. Yeah, but if, if, you, if, you, if you have a re because I want reasonable questions. There are unreasonable questions out there, correct? So I want, there is no such thing as an unreasonable question? No. Okay, well, if you get back off there, I'll, I'll get to your question, lady. What's your question, young man? So, do you think it is fair for my child to be punished if I have committed a crime? If I murder someone, is it fair for my child to go to prison? Oh, they don't believe in original sin. No, I don't believe in original sin. I believe in sinful nature. Not a biblical concept, not a historical concept in Christianity, not taught by the early church fathers. The first person to teach the doctrine of original sin was Augustine, or Augustine, depending on how you pronounce him. And uh, he was a false teacher, in my opinion. So I reject original sin, this idea that there's some kind of sin in a child. The child is born innocent before God. And Jesus said about children, such is of the kingdom of heaven. If you don't humble yourself and become like a little child, you'll by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, that has nothing to do with eternity. That has to do with a temporal consequence. We all live the temporal consequence of Adam and Eve's sin. So we are suffering from their sin. You suffer from your, your parents' sin if they sin. If my dad was a drunkard, I'd suffer from some, some, some degree. Just by a natural consequence. Of, uh, maybe he went to prison. It'd be his sin and I would suffer by not having a father. That's not God punishing you. That's a natural consequence of someone's sin. But God's not punishing people for all eternity or holding you accountable for your parents' sin. If your parents were drunkards, he wouldn't hold you accountable for being drunk unless you got drunk yourself. And that Ezekiel 18 makes this very clear in the Bible. That God will not hold you accountable for your parents' sin and vice versa. You're accountable for your sin and your sin alone. Not for Adam and Eve's sin back in the garden. And not for anyone else's sin throughout your lineage. But for your sin alone. The question I have for you is why won't you forsake your sin and trust in Jesus Christ? Why will you stay a sinner and go to hell? That's the real question. Why would I believe in Jesus rather than anyone else? Why not? Why not? Um, why not Bahamut? Why not? What do you believe, young man? Why not Horus? Why not Horus, the guy who, 2,000 years before Jesus, was born from a virgin, um, whose father was a god, uh, who turned water into wine, who has these striking similarities to Jesus, 2,000 years before? Him. That's nice. What do you believe in? Um, I don't believe there's any god. Turn atheist. Give me proof. Turn atheist. And I'll, I'll believe it. So, so what is your reality consistent, young man? My yeah, what Are you think is real? What is it consistent? I believe in things that exist. Right, but how? But how? How do you know things exist? What? How? I'm, I'm asking a serious question. How do you know what you know? What's your epistemology? How do I? Um, from, from like the observations, from measurements, from the things that we know exist. I don't okay. believe in the God. Honestly, it sounds like the people even because we can't prove it. So let's just, just make a succinct here. You believe in empiricism. You believe in what you can see, touch, taste, smell, and hear. And that's all you believe in. Yes. So you don't that and I believe in things that other people have measured, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So you're trusting what other people are saying then too. Yes. So if the disciples of Jesus Christ said they saw Jesus rose from the grave, you would believe them. If the disciples had maybe written well if God's son knew how to write, if he'd actually written this, maybe I'd believe it. You just told me that you believe what other people have observed and seen and heard and tasted. Now you're being a hypocrite because you're rejecting what other people have seen and written down. So you're telling me if someone writes it down, you don't believe it then? The entire purpose of empiricism is that the more grandiose the claim, the more evidence you need to it. So you don't believe when other people see, taste, touch, smell, and hear? I don't believe if someone says to me, hey, I can turn water into wine, then I'll say, okay, but I want to see it before I can read it. So those things you have to see before you prove it. Okay, I don't well, believe in Greek gods any more than I believe in Christian gods. It's a supercomputer that can retain so many millions of facts of something that's really special you have to see for yourself? Uh, no. No, it's not? It can do all kinds of millions of things. It can come up with ideas by itself. This is the information age. It can come up with ideas by itself. Is that something grandiose that you have to see proof of yourself? So you have to see him for yourself? No, no, no. I'm saying that if Jesus had existed today, the problem with your view, young man, is that you believe in things you can't see, that you can't taste, you can't touch, you can't smell, you can't hear. For example, you've never seen your brain, but you believe in that. You still think. You've never seen your lungs, but you still you still choose to breathe. You've never seen your stomach, but you choose you still choose to eat. 
So you don't believe in only what your taste, touch, sm uh, smell, or hear? I have never seen my stomach and I don't need to because I have in fact seen a... Well then, if you don't need to see your stomach to believe it exists, I don't have to see God to believe it exists. So according to your worldview, God could exist because you haven't seen him. show me a picture of God, like I've seen a picture of a stomach, I'll believe in it. So you have to see a picture of something for it to exist? I have to see some kind of evidence. Some kind of evidence other than random people. So if someone brought you a picture and it looked like and, it, and it said it was God, you'd believe God exists. You, you sound really, you really sound absurd, young man. If someone brought you a picture and said this is God, you'd believe God exists. I want to debate with you, but you won't. No, no, I think you're, I think you're trying to get away here because you know your position is very flawed and and very invalid, very flawed and very invalid. The fact of the matter is, you believe. I know you believe in logic. Logic, you can't see logic, you can't hear logic, you can't taste logic, you can't smell logic, but you believe in logic. I know you do because you're using it right now. Do you believe in morality? Do you believe in right and wrong? You can't see that, you can't taste it, you can't touch it, you can't smell it, you can't hear it, but you believe in morality. So you want me to answer your questions if you don't answer mine? I've answered your questions. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. Tell me a question you're asking that I haven't answered. the guy who was Jesus 2,000 years before Jesus. You said that's nice, and then you moved on. Well, that wasn't a question. That was a statement. He if you actually, about, for, okay. he never said what about Horus. He well, made some statements about, about Horus, saying, saying that he was a born of a virgin and born of a god, so on and so forth. No, I don't believe in what they say exists. I'm very sorry. <laughs> You're very sorry. You believe in that? You believe in Horus? I don't think you do. So it's irrelevant. But uh, so you do believe in it. You believe in it then? I didn't think you did. What's your question, young lady? Okay, do you think that women are so evil as they are portrayed in the Bible? As what is there? As evil as they are portrayed in the Bible, and they should suffer from the things that we do because we deserve it. And I'm not sure what you mean by that. Oh, uh, like periods and births and, you know. Like what? Like what did you say? Periods and births. These are all punishments, apparently, because of what you did. Do you think we're still evil? Sure. Do, do you still get periods? Uh, yeah. Are you able to give birth? Just yeah. like every other Okay, well then I guess those things are still valid, aren't they? Why are they Oh, because, well, the Bible says why. That's a natural consequence of what Eve did in the garden. But you're not punished eternally. It's not like an eternal punishment. Like you're punished for all eternity for... But it's a natural, temporal... Yes, yes. And I've already discussed with the other young man who walked away that there are natural, temporal consequences. Actually, you were here when I said that. You were standing right there. The whole time I've been up here, you've been here. That really these are natural <laughs> temporal consequences for Adam's sin. If your mom had done something like uh, maybe she was on crack while you were in the womb, you would have some consequences for that. The natural temporal consequence. It does make plenty of sense. Being being having pain in childbirth and having periods does not make you sin. Does not make you sinful. Those are natural consequences of someone else's sin. And we see that all throughout history. There's natural temporal consequences for people's sins. There's temporal consequences for what other people do upon other people. Every time you sin, you affect someone else, whether you know it or not. You affect yourself, you affect other people. You lie to someone, you affect them. You affect yourself as well. I thought children were born innocent, so why are we still suffering for some chick's crimes? That's not, that's not guilt. That's not guilt. Guilt is, is being punished for what you have done. Yeah, it's a temporal consequence my body is my of sin, my, yes. My body suffers, basically. Well, I've already discussed that. I've already discussed why your body is suffering. You already know why your body You don't receive it, you don't accept because it, but it's the fact. Yes, yes. and men that's suffer as well because they have to work. And men don't suffer they have, anything. Yes, they do. And, and, and Genesis talks uh, what, about that. What do you suffer, sir? Men have to work that's for food. Oh, no. and women and if, don't do that either. Well, you don't have to submit to the God, the order and the, and the household if you don't, you don't want to, but women are supposed to be at home according to the Bible. Oh, yeah. Yes, exactly. according to Titus chapter 2. And so, and so if, 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 you were, if you were obeying Titus chapter 2, you wouldn't be working outside the home if you were married. Yes, that's what the Bible says. But obviously you don't submit to that. Yes, that's what the Bible says. If a woman is married, she should stay at home. Well, the Bible transcends the 1950s. The Bible transcends all of time. Okay, and what about the, the Bible is God's law for all of humankind for all time. <laughs> what about the fact that the guy who wrote the Bible, King James or whatever? King James didn't write the Bible. You are, you are historically inaccurate. He had nothing to do with writing the Bible. He gave the authority to translate the Bible from the Hebrew and Greek into English without being punished for it. 
people before King James translated the Bible in English. William Tyndale, John Wycliffe translated the Bible in English as well. English was not spoken before, so how did the Bible be reverted to? It's translated from Hebrew and Greek into English. It's called translation. If I go to Spain right now and I can't talk Spanish, I can use a translator to speak to people. No, I have the Greek and Hebrew on my on my computer. I know that Greek, it has not been thing. changed. Unless you can show me an instance of change. On my computer, but that doesn't mean Greek. Can you give me an instance of a changing? Tell me the Greek word that's been changed in English is not, mean, is not translated accurately. I want to hear about this. So I've studied the Greek and I haven't found okay. one. So you don't have an example. You're just you're throwing it in thin air. You don't really have an example. You just want to accuse the Bible. Yes, you do. Oh, so I can just say the Bible is wrong but have no example of it being wrong. You know why you say that? Because you don't want it to be right. Not because no, you have any it's evidence that it's right. wrong. Well, prove it if it's not right. You have no evidence, but you're saying it's not right. In that Bible, it says that touching the skin of a pig on a Sunday is sacrilege. Actually, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. Sunday wasn't even the Sabbath. Saturday was the Sabbath in the Old Testament. And you shouldn't eat pork according to the Jewish law. I don't even know the Bible. You don't, you're, the things you're saying, the Bible doesn't say. You've read, read the Bible. You've read the Bible? Oh, several classes of the Bible doesn't mean you've read the Bible. And if you're getting at this university, I'm sure you're getting lots of misinformation about what you've been spouting right now. Oh, so, so lots of misinformation. Well, from what you're saying, I haven't heard one correct thing yet. I haven't heard one thing accurate the Bible says yet from your mouth. I haven't heard one thing accurate out of the Bible myself. Well, that's your problem. You don't agree with the Bible, and that's why you don't like the Bible. That's why you want to discredit the Bible. Because the Bible judges you. The Bible says if you don't stop sinning, you're going to go to hell. No wonder why you don't like the Bible. You don't want to submit to God. You don't want to. You don't want to submit to God. That's why you don't like the Bible. Do you think it's possible to turn water into wine? Like, do you think it's possible? If God exists man? and God is supernatural and God created the whole world as why the Bible says, then yes, of course it's possible for Him to change water into wine. Why are there murderers? Why are there? Because people have free will. Why are there homosexuals? Why are there sodomites? Why are there lesbians? Why are there drunkards? Why are there fornicators? Because people have free will and they choose to sin. In order for it to be genuine love, in order for people to genuinely have an obedience to God, which is what God wants, okay, He wants a relationship with them, there must be free will. And if there's free will, the opposite action must be possible, and that's rejecting God's will and going their own way. And that's what most people do. They go their own way. They reject God's will for their life, they reject God's word for their life, they reject God's instruction for their life, and they choose to do what they want to do instead. God's will too. Sure is. Even though they're born in another country. And it doesn't matter if you're born in another country. The Bible talks about this in Acts chapter 17. It talks about why you're born, where you're born, and who you're born to, and the time you're born. Okay. And the purpose, not so you can become part of a different religion, yeah. but so you can seek after God, that you may know Him. It says this in verse uh, Acts chapter 17 and verse 26. And He's made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundary of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope they might grope for Him and find Him though He's not far from each one of us. God's not, God is omnipresent. He's not far from the people in other, other countries and other religions. He wants them to seek Him and find Him. Who said I hated sinners? I do love the sinner. Yes, that's why I'm here. If I didn't love sin, I wouldn't bother coming here. That's not hatred. So That's the love. That's a warning. Is God going to send people to hell? Tell me how much you love me. Well, that's your problem. You don't have the right God. You don't have the God of the Bible. They go to hell, but you don't know who's going to hell. Yes, I do. I do. The Bible tells me who's going to hell. It does. Yes. It tells me fornicators and drunkards and the homosexuals and the sodomites and idolaters and adulterers and thieves. Those are the people who are going to go to hell. Those are the people who are going to go to hell. But now there's hope for those people done a lot of those things and Christ has cleansed me and Christ has changed me. He saved me. He's forgiven me of my sins and cleansed me of my sins. What are we doing with the woman problem? What woman problem? Well, Paul and also in the Old Testament there's a lot of talk about women, you know, and like they speak up in church and God, I fucking hate that when women just talk, you know? I mean, like, clearly the Bible says they're not quite to the level of man. Men, right? Right? Actually, the Bible doesn't say that, Senator. Does Pardon? not say that. They don't? It doesn't? Does not. Does not. Right. You may not. You may not touch my Bible. Yeah. It's too holy for you. Oh God! Oh my God! Yeah, so God commands you to repent. Thank you, sir. Christ shed His blood for every man, every woman, every tribe, every tongue, every nation. And that's where the only. And now He's commanded all men everywhere to repent, because coming a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. God is going to judge your life. He's going to judge your life. He's going to judge your thoughts, your words, your deeds. 
Everybody. Yeah, it's been translated in English, Sinner. Yeah, I've been translated from the he the Hebrew and Greek and a little bit of Aramaic and Daniel. It's been translated to English, That's so right. we can fully understand and it. God, all powerful, needed us painful in 2,000 years for that to happen. Actually, God, actually, 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 it was translated to English more than uh, less than 2,000 no, years no, after it happened. All the well, right. English it wasn't popular 2,000 years ago. Why would he translate English 2,000 years ago? Well, English wasn't even around. So he translated English so people in an English-speaking language could understand it. Yeah, so God has made the Bible available, and it's still being translated to other languages that wasn't available before. But people know the truth, whether they have the Bible or not, because God's put it within them. They know there's a creator God. They have a conscience. God has written his law upon their heart. And they know right from wrong because God has revealed it to them. Their conscience either accuses them when they do wrong or excuses them when they do right. And you know it's wrong. You know lying is wrong. You know stealing is wrong. You know lust is wrong. You know adultery is wrong. You know homosexuality and sodomy is wrong. You refuse to obey your conscience. And in not obeying your conscience, you're searing your conscience. You're corrupting your conscience. You're not listening to it. And it's going to come to a point where you're not going to hear your conscience anymore. So I, I, I admonish you to forsake your sins. To listen you to your conscience has been given to you by God. You admonish us to, to give up your sins. sins okay. To give you up your drunkenness and your fornication. Give you up your mocking and trust are, in are, Jesus are Christ English and following. Yes, young lady, what's your question? Okay, I just want to know, did you sin once upon a time? Yeah, I used to be a wicked sinner. So when Tell us about it. Who brought me into what? Yeah, like what person, <laughs> <laughs> like what person taught you about Oh, there were several people. Did they yell at you and tell you were a sinner like you're doing right now? Yeah, they told me I was a sinner, but they, they weren't preaching the open air. They were talking to me to one to one. Yelling at you, like I did yesterday. Wait, they were talking to you one on one? Yes. I will demonstrate again. And it brought you into the Holy Spirit? So you're saying that you can only talk to people one to one? No, 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 she's asking. She's I'm not just, saying. And, and that you can't, you can't raise your voice and preach? No, she's asking. Do, do you know what the Greek word behind preach means? Do you know? Apparently, it means to be an asshole. First of all, I'm not yelling at anybody. I'm preaching loudly so everyone can hear. Yes. That's what the Greek word caruso behind the word preach means. It means to proclaim loudly in a public place, to be a public crier. And that's what I'm doing. It's what Jesus did, what the apostles did, what the prophets you, you did. All the men of God throughout the centuries have done this as well. So I'm Greek. here. Yes, I do. So I'm here you to preach the Greek? gospel to you. Wow. I want Jesus. you to hear the truth. I don't have to talk to you one on one. I can do that, and I do do that. But that's not the, the primary method God uses to save a sinner is the public proclamation of the gospel, which is what we've been doing today. So we did yesterday as well. And so we want you to repent. And this is the, this is the, if you don't like this, the Bible says that if the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to you, then you are perishing, the Bible says. So if you think the preaching of the gospel is foolishness, it's a sure sign you're on the wrong side and that you are perishing. This is the method that God uses to save sinners. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Yes, young man back there. You know, I, I really you know, appreciate you guys coming out here, and, you know, exercising, dreaming of speech. And awesome. Grace on us. Awesome. Um, I, you know, completely support what you're doing in the sense of it's, you know, really good justice. However, however, you know, the substance of what you're saying is obviously raising controversy within this, you know, group of fine young men. You might not see them as fine because of your dog you're rejecting and you're labeling that you are, you know, acting as a medium to convey through the good Lord's word or whatnot. Uh, however, you know, I'm kind of at, you know, a standstill. You know, I'm starting to reevaluate, you know, my own life, my own life decisions, my actions, you know, and I'm saying, wow, it's quite quite possible that I am what you say a sinner is, because of you know, what I choose to do doesn't necessarily fall in line with what you say not to do. So, one thing I really want to like, ask, you know, regarding my own personal behavior, is if I, you know, jack off 12 times a day, yes. that makes me a sinner. Yes, you are a sinner, and you're a wicked and vile sinner, and you need to repent. You're a known you need to repent. You need to repent. Yes. Um, you say that you're not. And, and, and if you think that's funny, then you're you're not you're going to hell too. If you think that's funny. You're going to hell. Yes. You're going to hell in a handbasket. I'm I'm coming to you in, in complete earnest. 
so please don't think that I'm coming at you. But you said that you are not yelling at us when in fact you are yelling at us. You're standing at a level that's above us, which, which would imply that you yourself are above us. And if you want us to come into your your religion, your belief system, why wouldn't you be here on the ground with us as one? Uh, you read into what fears. I'm doing, young lady. Uh, I am projecting my voice. The word yelling you is... You can project your voice from right here! Well, that's nice, but mo less people will see me from right there. I'm here to project my voice to as many people as possible, and you give a derogatory word on that called yelling, which is derogatory. You derogatory. Said yelling. Yelling. Well, you I said, said I'm not yelling because that's a derogatory way of saying it. I am proclaiming in a loud voice, well, which is on. what okay, I am commanded to do. Allow me to change it's what I'm commanded to do by the. You don't have to change it. It's what I'm commanded to do by the Bible to preach the gospel in a public place and proclaim it loudly. Uh, if you don't like that, that's fine. I, I have no problem with like you not that. liking I it. I have no I problem with you wanting me to come now. down and talk to you with a, a lower tone voice, but I'm, I'm not going to do it. But I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay right here and proclaim loudly so many people can hear. I, well, I'm just going off of what uh, she said earlier, is that you were brought to God by talking one-on-one -on -one with people. If I, if, I was, if I wasn't a Christian right now, I would want something to do to me what I'm doing. Just because someone didn't do it to me does not mean I would not have liked it or that wouldn't have brought me to Christ. That's fallacious. And so I would have, I would have listened to someone preaching the gospel to me and hopefully I would have repented. But I'm loving my neighbor as myself by obeying Jesus Christ and doing what He's he told me to do and born. wanting you to come to repentance, wanting you to come born. to eternal life, wanting you to Don't trust worry, in Jesus Christ. Well, I have one, very one, much. one point to make. So imagine you were at a car dealership, you're looking for a new car, and a car salesman comes up to you. He's like, buy this car! And you're like, if you don't buy this car, you're going to regret it! Yeah. Would you, would, is that how you're, you you're 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 on the same thing I just refuted. It's, wait, wait, is that how you I, I filed a lawsuit against you because you're not buying this car. You're on the same thing I just refuted. I, I follow my religion. You may not like my religion. It is, it is your religion. Yeah. Yeah. If, you don't, if you don't like my religion, right that's now. fine. You're going to hell! That's fine. I mean, that's what you're doing to us. You no, actually, I have, I have not raised my voice like that at all. That, that's a, a fabrication of what I'm doing. That's not what I've been doing. Wait, this this is about well, as loud as I am right now is about as loud as I've gotten so far. So you're lying about me, and you're misrepresenting, misrepresenting me too as well. So, you're so, misrepresenting yourself. I am not, I'm doing exactly what I said I was going to do, and exactly what the Bible commands me to do. And you don't like that, and no wonder like you don't like that because you're, you're a sinner. I'm not expecting a sinner. Really Aren't you an atheist as well? I'm agnostic. I'm not expecting a sinner or an agnostic to like what I'm doing or like what I'm saying. I never said I liked but it doesn't make it any less true. It doesn't make now it any less viable. It, it doesn't make the method uh, wrong or incorrect. I'm doing what the Bible says. I'm, I don't submit myself to your standard of how I should evangelize. I submit myself to God's standard of how I should evangelize, because I am a Christian. I don't follow agnostics and do what they tell me to do. I do what God tells me to do. If you don't like it, that's fine. I have no problem with you not liking it. Let me ask you just one more question. Um, for what you've been doing, I don't know how long you've been doing it, has anyone ever come up to you and been like, I'm a sinner and I totally want to become a vessel for God. What you've said has changed my life completely. Yes, yes, many people. But even if no one had, it wouldn't change the facts. It wouldn't change the facts. I'm, I'm called by God to proclaim the truth whether people come or not. I can't make you come. I can't make you repent. I can't make you trust in Christ. That is your choice to make. So no matter how good a preacher I am, how convincing I am, uh, how accurate I am in all the information I give, it's never going to force someone to repent or force someone to become a Christian. That's your choice. And so if no one ever repented, and all the years I've preached and all the years I will preach, it wouldn't discredit me. It wouldn't make me... Uh, any less efficient, it wouldn't make me any less uh, a good preacher. Uh, I'm just simply doing what God commands me well, to do. I'm just, all I have to say is you catch more flies with honey. That's, all That's nice. I'm not here to touch flies. flies. I'm not here to use honey. It's I'm here to preach the whole counsel of God. I'm here to take the whole counsel of God. It's not biblical. Your, your idea, you just spat it out as an agnostic non-Christian trying to tell the Christian preacher how to preach and you will bang the Bible. It makes no sense. It's not biblical. I'm here to preach the whole council of God. No, it does. Doctor, to what church? I'm not a Roman Catholic. I don't follow a Roman Catholic religion. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. My basis. Ah, uh, the early church fathers. Wrong. Dead wrong. 
I've read St. Clement of Rome. I've read, I, I've read Polycarp. I've read Ignatius. I've read Papias. I've read Justin Martyr. I've read Irenaeus. I've read all these men, and none of them are Roman Catholic at the, at the modern definition of Roman Catholicism. Not even a bit. They didn't believe in, in the papacy. They didn't believe in the Bishop of Rome being the Bishop of the Bishop. They didn't believe in apostolic succession in that sense. They didn't believe in Mary being the co-redeemer of the world. They didn't believe in praying to dead people who are, who are, who are saints who died physically and asking them to pray to God for you. They didn't believe in those things. I was addressing what he had already said. He was the one being interrupting me. You made a statement saying they were all Roman Catholics, and I addressed that. And all you did the whole time was not listen one bit, but simply what you're doing right now, trying to interrupt every single time. Now, if you want to have a dialogue, I'm willing to do that. You may I listen to everyone else out here patiently, and I won't listen to you patiently if you listen to me. But if you're just going to formulate a response while I'm saying something, interrupt me every five seconds, I'm not even going to bother talking to you. I'm not even going to bother. Yes, I have read Irenaeus. Oh, is it Peter and Paul or just Peter? No, no, Peter and Paul. So you don't believe in Matthew 16 according to the Roman Catholic interpretation? According to the Roman Catholic interpretation? No, no, if you look at the Roman Catholic interpretation, they always... The keys were only given to Peter, right? They weren't given to Peter. So they weren't given to Paul. So why are we basing upon Peter and Paul? I have no disagreement with that. I think Paul got there first. Peter got there later. Paul said, I will not build upon another man's foundation. He wrote to the Romans. He said, I want to come there and have fruit among you. And so he was not going there after Peter did. He got there first, and then Peter got there. But that does not prove that Peter was a pope in the sense that the modern definition gives to it, and that all the people in Rome after that, Linus and so on, and Clement and so on and so forth, were popes either in the modern term. What do you think is the modern The vicar of Christ on earth. Yes. That's not actually his name. Is it one of his roles? Show me that in the Bible. Show me that in the early church fathers' writing and show me that in the Bible. Except Peter always stood for the... So you can't show it to me in the Bible? Hold on. Think if you look through the Acts of the Apostles... I read the Acts of the Apostles many times. Okay, okay. Did you read it? Sure do. Okay. So you notice that Peter is always a representative of the Apostles. Always a representative of Christ. He was the first person. Okay, hold. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there, just for a second. I want to examine your reasoning here. Well, he's going on with several points. I don't. I don't want to take five points at once. I'll take one point at a time. Let's examine this one point you made about him being the leader of the apostles, healing people first, going to the Gentiles first. How does that prove that Peter is the vicar of Christ on earth when it, when, when he was there? And then you can address my point. Make one point. You can address it, or that every person after him in Rome. Even though he wasn't the first apostle to get to Rome, that every person after him who was in Rome is the bishop of bishops, or the pope, or the vicar, the very representation of Christ. How does that prove that? It doesn't prove that. I mean, look at Acts 15 Council in Jerusalem. I was raised a Roman Catholic, I've studied it quite a bit, yes. Yes, and I've, I've even listened to Roman Catholic apologists debate Christian apologists. Yes, and I know what that means. So what does it mean? The representation of Christ on earth. It's like Christ is still here. He is in Christ's place on earth, ruling over the church. Yeah, no, Christ is the head of the church. So basically that's what a bishop is. <laughs> no, no, a bishop is a shepherd over a flock, yeah, yeah, okay. over local flocks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Exactly. So if the bishop is a shepherd over a flock, that would make him in a sense a representation. No, there's no shepherd over all the flock, over all the world, as you're supposing. There's shepherds that are local, and there's a plurality of shepherds in each yes. local place. Yes. And Not a one shepherd above all other shepherds. Hold on. The role of Peter was the representation of the apostles. He was the leader of the apostles, just as the current bishop of Rome. No, I would say practically. I would say practically speaking, Peter was the leader of the apostles. But nowhere is he exalted and said, "You are the leader of the apostles. You will rule over them." In fact. Jesus all throughout says, if you're going to be the first, if you're going to be the grace, you must be the last, you must be the least, you must be the servant. I don't see the Pope doing that. Yeah, but do you know what the title, title of the Pope is? What's that? Servant of the servants of God. Uh -huh, and, and I see that, practically speaking, at, not at all in the Pope. Not at all, because he's always ruling over people. He's not serving them. He's not making himself low. 
He's really, he makes decisions about these things that he shouldn't be making that contradict Bi the Bible. No, it doesn't. Sure does. It's quite in line with Matthew 16. No, it isn't. Okay, then why is you still, you know, before we even get, you're, you're, you're making a jump here. You still haven't proven that Peter was a pope, and you're making the illogical jump from that to all of his successors, and you're assuming the successors are in the Bishop of Rome, are the Bishop of Rome, when actually the only church we know that Peter founded that I'm aware of uh, was the church at Antioch. And so, if anything, we should have the pope in Antioch, not in Rome, because Paul founded the Roman church. Uh, he was the first apostle there. Oh, he, either was Peter. Peter was never a bishop there. No, we have no, we have, we have no documents of that at all. What does that mean? They buried him there, and therefore he was a bishop there. Come on, give me a break. Is that really your, lo your logical jump you're making there? So you haven't proven that Peter's a pope. You haven't proven that uh, that every successor from Peter is going to be a pope, and you haven't proven that he was a bishop at Rome. None of these things have been proven. You have Clement of Rome. I, yeah, I've read it. He was, the, he was the third bishop of Rome, as far as I know. Linus was first, and then after him, I can't remember the guy between them. There you go. Okay. Okay. So you have that. You also have Saint Irenaeus talking about the Church of Rome being respected. No, no, no. I don't remember Irenaeus ever saying it's the head. I remember him talking about Peter and Paul going there. Oh no, no! You're you're reading into that. What you've done, you've read your Roman Catholic theology into Irenaeus. If you were to go to Irenaeus and not had Roman Catholic theology in hand, you wouldn't have gotten that out of it at all. And you wouldn't have. You know you wouldn't have. No, you wouldn't have. No, it, it says what it says. Peter was the apostle to the Jewish people, as he says in Galatians. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles, as it says in Galatians. They were especially graced, according to Paul in, in Galatians, for those two groups of people, which includes everybody in the whole world. It does not mean that Peter was the pope, or the church is supposed to be uh, headquartered at Rome, or that the bishop at Rome is the head over all the, all, the bishop, all, all the church. It does not mean that at all. You've read that into that, young man. And how you can't see that, I have no idea. In the Bible. The scriptures, the holy scriptures. Uh, the scriptures were not compiled, as you say. The scriptures were recognized, but they weren't compiled. There wasn't like a big a council of men who decided, well, this book's in, this book's out, this book's in, this book's out. That's not the way it worked. Hold on, but if I were to decide today that a certain group around the same day, how Well, first of all, you have to be able to verify the authorship. Uh, the authorship of the scriptures we have in the New Testament were verified by the early church fathers who knew the apostles, who knew that they were disciples of the apostles. Well, I'm, I'm trusting that these men who actually died for their faith, who were not liars, who lived holy, who knew these apostles, and were laying their life down for the truth, there's no this thing as a mistake. And, and plus, my, my whole foundation, I mean, I'm saying how God did it. I'm not saying I'm trusting in man. I'm trusting in God. I'm trusting ultimately in God for the preservation of his word. Now, obviously, he's written his word down through men, holy men of old, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and he's preserved it through men. So I have no problem with him preserving through men. Second Peter 3. Oh, no, who, who says I have to, to limit myself to that? Who, who says I have to limit myself that where's the basis for... I mean, the, the homosexuals come to me and say, well, where does Jesus talk about homosexuality? And it, no, I'm saying, I'm using your same logic here. Where's the basis for New Testament scripture from Jesus Christ? And I don't, I don't have to go to Jesus Christ to have a New Testament basis for scripture. But Jesus Christ did say that when the Holy Spirit comes, in John 14, he will bring to your remembrance all things I taught you. And the reason he did that was so they can orally teach the churches so they can write it down for the preceding generations after the apostles would be gone. So they would know the uh, doctrines of Jesus Christ and therefore the uh, doctrines of the apostles as well. That's the basis. And you, you read in 2 Peter 3, Peter says, Peter says that Paul's epistles are hard to understand. Some twist them to their own destruction and they do the rest of the scriptures. So he was equating Paul's writings with scripture, graphe, inspired by God. 
He's talking to the apostles. He said, he'll, he'll bring to your remembrance all things whatsoever I taught you. When he says he'll bring to your remembrance all things whatsoever I taught you, he couldn't possibly mean you and me because he didn't teach us anything individually. No, he couldn't mean a bishop of today either because Christ did not taught them in person anything. He taught the apostles all things. So how can he remind you of those things if you never heard them in the first place? No, no, you have to be there reminding them. They heard it first and then he reminds them. If, the Holy, if you're relying just on the Holy Spirit, he's not reminding you. He's teaching you for the first time. The word reminds me that I've been taught before and now it's being brought back to my remembrance. Oh, I'm looking at that. I don't agree with that. But the fact of the matter is, he's talking to the apostles. Read, read scripture. It says God. It no, that's not what it says. That's not what it says. It does not say God. I will remind you of all things whatsoever I taught you. What translation is that? This is New King James. New King James. Anyone can translate if they want, but I can check the translation by going to the Greek myself. Yes, I do. Koine Greek. Yes. Do you defend any of your arguments without using the Bible? Well, I'm dealing with him right now. He's a Roman Catholic. He believes in the Bible. That's why I'm dealing with him. If I dealt with an atheist, I wouldn't use the Bible as much or an agnostic. I might use it a little bit, but I'd be using more logic and reason. I'm just saying that in general. Like in general what? Any of your beliefs, your arguments, without having to call upon Jesus or the Bible. Uh, well, I, I, I think that's kind of a fallacious thing to say because, hold on a second, let me, let me, let me answer, I'll get back to you in a second. I, I have dealt with you for a while. I'm not trying to cut it off, okay? We can talk, if I'll give you my car, we can talk more if you want to through email. But I, I want to get some other people here too, if you don't mind. Uh, but I, I, to say I can't use the Bible, wh why, why can't I use the Bible? Well, it just seems like that's such a fail-safe and a crutch for all of Christian arguments. Uh, well, the Bible is my source for what I believe. Why do you believe it? I believe it's God's inspired word. No, no, you said what you believe. Why? Why do I believe the Bible? I believe the Bible because I believe it's God's inspired word. <laughs> yes, but why do you, yes. why do you believe that? We can, we can do this all day. Okay, well, I, there's lots of reasons why I believe. Reasons that, reasons that you probably wouldn't receive. Are you an atheist? Uh, agnostic? It doesn't matter. If I'm it does matter because I'm dealing with your worldview. Are you an atheist or agnostic? I'm asking a question why you believe. I may be well, uh, the reason I'm asking matter. this question because the proofs I have for me are probably not going to be convincing for you because you don't hold to my worldview. So I'm not going to bother giving to you. I mean, what would be convincing that, that to seems you? Like a, that seems like a cop out. No, it's not a cop out because I had plenty of I had plenty of proofs for atheists that not that God does exist, but I wouldn't use the Bible to prove it. I wouldn't use the Bible to prove that my God exists to an atheist or agnostic because you don't receive the Bible. You don't accept the Bible. I, I talk about the Bible to, I, I preach the Bible and talk about the Bible to all the Christians who accept that as their authority. Why do you believe? Hold on, he raises a good point. So answer his question. I mean, I can answer as a Roman Catholic, but you don't have the authority to answer it. I do have the authority to answer it. But, yeah, man, you're not going to direct me and tell me what to say. Okay, no offense, you don't tell me what to do, okay? You asked us to ask you questions, we're asking questions, answer them. Well, I will answer your question, but I'm not, if you're an atheist or agnostic, you're not, my proofs are not going to be convincing to you. There's lots of reasons why I believe the Bible is the word of God. Uh, it's, um, excuse me? I didn't change my behavior, I'm not changing my arguments. I'm not changing my behavior, it's completely different. I, I, I didn't hear anything you just said, please say it again. Well, Jesus didn't deal with different religions. He dealt with Jews, and that's it. He went for the household of the Jews. He didn't go to Gentiles. He didn't go to... It did matter because when Paul went to the Gentiles, he did change his argumentation. Look at the, the Areopagus in Athens. He didn't, he didn't go to them and preach, preach the Bible to them. To the God that you say is unknown, I come here to preach that God to you. Okay, so I use presuppositional apologetics. I use the tag argument for God, the transcendental argument for God. For example... Atheists and agnostic, everyone I've met, and there might be some who don't believe this, they believe in science. Okay? No, no, what I mean by science is they believe in observing, reproducing, testing, looking for patterns in nature, the scientific method. They believe their five senses are reliable, etc. They believe in uniformity of nature. They believe in these things. My question for the atheist agnostic is what, what uh, reason do they have to believe in these things? You see, to even engage in science is you're engaging in science to find patterns, to see how nature or the world works. The, but the problem with that is, is that to engage in science and do that, 
you have to believe there's patterns in the first place to look for patterns. You have to assume the uniformity of nature in order to examine the uniformity of nature. If they see a pattern, the same thing happened ten times, a hundred times, or a thousand times, they're not going to say, well, the thousand and first time, it may not happen. They're going to conclude that's the way nature is. Now, of course, they're always open to the future. If they're changed, they'll, make, they'll adjust their experiment, adjust what they're saying, but they're assuming uniformity of nature. Now, the question I have for the atheist agnostic, who doesn't believe there was a God who created the world, an intelligent being, they believe it all came out of nothing, out of a Big Bang, with no intelligent being behind it, no designer, no creator behind it, what right do they have, what reason do they have to even believe in the uniformity of nature and therefore go forth to look for patterns? That's, that's circular reasoning. I observe it and test it because I observe it. That's circular. No, it is not. I have a reason. I have a reason to believe that God exists because I have a reason to believe that there's uniformity in nature because my God is creative. He's intelligent. He's orderly. So my God is the very basis, the very precondition that is needed to believe in uniformity in nature, to believe that we'll find patterns in nature, to believe that my five senses are actually reliable. They're not a product of random chance mutations over millions of years. They're a product of an intelligent being, a creator God, have who gave me God? these five senses. Have you seen God? Have you heard God? I don't God? have, have to see God? God. I have, have heard God. God. I don't have, I don't have to see God to believe he exists. You only believe in what you see, young man? Why do you believe, sir? Do you listen to the radio? I don't. Do you don't listen to the radio? Do you watch TV? I do. do you, have you seen a TV wave? I have not. Do you plug in electronics? There are scientific but processes scientific designed... Exactly. But you haven't seen these things. You're saying, I, I, have I seen I God? Therefore, I can't... Seen radio radio you haven't seen radio waves, young man. Have you used microwaves? Do you heat up food with a microwave? Have you ever seen microwaves? Well, I'm done talking to him. I'm talking to you right now. Have you seen microwaves? No, you haven't, but you still use microwaves. But you, you, the microwaves that heat up. Oh, see, so you don't, no, you don't believe in, you don't believe in microwaves, but you use a microwave. That makes a lot of sense to me. Because it works. Okay, well, let me use your logic and say, well, God works. That's why I believe in Him. So there you go. So now God does this, right? God exists, right? Yes, I'm a Christian. What's that? Hinduism is illogical. It's illogical. <laughs> <laughs> prove it. You just lost all credibility. Prove to me. Prove to me that Christianity. Prove to me. Prove to me that Christianity is illogical. I want to hear this. Give me one proof that Christianity is illogical. Okay. Magic man in the sky creates everything that's been proven by science time and time again. That's illogical that someone created things? So your logic is that we all came from nothing. That intelligence came from non-intelligence. That's what you believe, and that's more logical than what I believe, that creation came from creator, and intelligence came from intelligence. Give me one example ever in science of intelligence coming from non-intelligence. That's not been proven, it's not been observed, not, it's your theory, but I want you to tell me of one time you've observed intelligence coming from non-intelligence, or life coming from non-life. You're the one who's illogical, young man. You don't even believe in your own theories. You have to come up here and I can't, I can't hear you, young man. Are you talking to him? There's a lot of good theories on that, and they explain it very well, sir. I had a conversation. You looked at the fossil records. Macroevolution does not exist. Right. Science <laughs> does. What are you fucking kidding? Macro? Macro does. Micro. No, macro does. Macro evolution it totally evolution exists. Totally exists. It exists in your imagination. That's about it. Oh, yeah? Is that the fairy tale for... Processes there to show us that it did exist? No, there's no macro evolution. Macro evolution has never been observed, reproduced, or tested. Micro evolution has, but micro evolution is losing information, corruption in DNA, mutation, not added information. There's no added information from a, we've never observed, reproduced, or tested added information to go from reptile scales, type scales, into feathers. We've never observed that, and there's no way that a person, a reptile, can lose information to corrupt them into having wings and feathers. Velociraptors didn't have feathers because they did. I mean, it's okay. What if that, that was actually fact. proven true that velociraptors did have feathers. They're, they're not bald. I'm sorry, guys. That shattered your world. What, what is that? How does that prove 
that animals evolved. So you have a reptile that has feathers, and that proves that birds came from reptiles? And that, that, that's the only difference between reptiles and birds? What about the weight of their bones? Their bones are hollow in birds, so they can fly. How did that happen? How did that? Show me an example of, of a, an animal that has ho, half hollow bones that's a transition between a reptile and a bird. You don't have it. You don't have the evidence. What you have is your theory. And the reason you have your theory is because, hold on, let me finish. The reason you have your theory is because you don't like the God of the Bible. That's what it breaks down to. You don't like him. You're arguing for evidence, but you're willing to believe in something you can't have any evidence in. Oh, no. He's a basic for all evidence. How do you know that? Without the God of the Bible, you can't know anything for what sure. God doing What's the reason for that? What God was doing before the earth, not this count, whatever he was doing does not discount that he is there and that he created you. How do you know God existed in the first place? Oh, I don't know exactly what God did before, before the earth began, but he had fellowship within the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What's that? What was his reasoning for creating earth, creating existence, creating the universe, creating humanity, creating good and evil, creating anything? Why well, God didn't create good and evil. God created well, he he made the tree of knowledge. Ah, the, the, knowledge of the knowledge of good and evil is not good and evil. Why would you put that to okay, your that's the knowledge, the understanding of good and evil. Yes, good and evil are defined as good is defined as obeying God. Evil is defined as disobeying God. Okay, in the Bible, that's how it's defined. So God gave free will to humankind because He wants genuine love, genuine relationship with them. Okay, you would agree that you need free will to have genuine love, correct? that there already is a choice between good and evil? Yes, there is a choice between good and evil, and that's what I'm saying here. That's where evil came from, from man and Satan and the fallen angels making bad choices. And God did not create evil, but if there is free will, then must of necessity be the possibility of evil. That just sounds like God's being a dick. He's like, hey, I'm going to give you free will, but like, you know... No, every person has had the ability with their free will to choose to obey or disobey. That's your fault, disobey. Why would he make you so God wants genuine obey? love. God could have made you a robot and made you obey him, but that wouldn't be genuine love, wouldn't be a genuine relationship. But if God created, if in the theory that God created the, the idea of love, why not make a robot love it? That's not love. That's what I just said. The definition of love, there must be free on both sides. If you walk up to a young lady in this campus and you can press a button on the back of her neck that made her love you, it wouldn't be love on your side or her side. But if God can create anything he so chooses, then why not something that... You're not getting it. The definition of love is this, from the Bible and from God. Free will, two creatures choosing to be in relationship to each other. So you're defining love in prophet. You're taking your definition of love. God can make a robot make him love him. That's not love in the Bible, and you're imposing upon my worldview. The fact is, God has allowed you to choose. The question is, why won't you love him? He loved you at the time. Don't love him back. He said he his son to die for you. Why don't you submit yourself to him and his son, repent of your sin, and, and live for him? Because didn't exist in the first well, what place. Did I say you haven't proven that. <laughs> What's your question, young lady? So, when God flooded the earth and killed everyone, that was love. That was him showing his, his love. So that was justice. That was judgment. <laughs> so, that was wrath. So if my boyfriend like jobs me in the tub, that's his, him showing me that he loves me. I just said it was justice. It was wrath. You're not listening. That was not love from God. That was justice and that was wrath. God is not just love. God is just. He is good. And there are consequences for choosing wrongly. God has given you free will. You can choose to sin every single day of your life for the rest of your life, but there will be consequences for those actions. The cops on this campus, they don't follow you right where you go and make you do right, but if you do wrong, you'll be punished. And no one questions that because you know it's right. You know there's something like justice, punishment, consequences for bad actions. God the same way. So where we get that idea from is God. Why do we need the Bible to teach us what's good and wrong? There could be an Indian person who's never read the Oh, I didn't say we need the Bible to tell us right and wrong, man. The Bible does confirm what is right and wrong. But the Bible says about your conscience that you have the law of God written upon your heart. Your conscience bears witness, either accusing you or else excusing you. If you do wrong, your conscience accuses you. If you do right, it excuses you. That's something that God put within you. And that's why every man throughout the world, whether they have a Bible or not, they're accountable for a certain amount of light from God, 
because God has put it within them, and every man, whether it's India, or North America, wherever it may be, they have a, a somewhat of knowledge what right and wrong is, and they'll be held to give an account for that knowledge. God will judge people according to the knowledge they have. So, for example, I heard someone say earlier, God, does he get uh, sent to hell? Well, he doesn't get judged for rejecting He's never heard of Jesus. But he does get judged for rejecting the light he does have, the knowledge he does have, from God, on his conscience, the law of God written upon his heart. It's a lot to answer for that. So people here in America, who've probably heard more truth than anyone else in the history of the world, they'll be the most accountable people, because they reject the most amount of knowledge, the most amount of truth. If you can give a reason for why you believe in God, that's logical, I will convert right now. But I need um, a logical reason why you believe in God. The logical reason for God existing is the impossibility of the contrary. Without God existing, you can't know anything. How do you know that? Yeah. Without God that, existing... That is an, that is an well, you just, you just, I'll you prove it right mean, now. You know, now, now this is, if I prove it, it doesn't no. mean you're gonna, it's going to convince you or you're no, going to convert you like you just said you would. Because, because the, the truth does not uh, necessitate you being convinced by it or you following it. People do things they know are wrong all the time. That's fine, but okay, but let me just get to it. Okay, so how do you know? How do you know what you know? How do you know what you know? Uh, through cause effect relationship. Talk about this. So for your five senses, right? Yes. Okay. What right do you have to believe that your five senses are working properly? You don't. Okay, so you can't know anything, right? So you can't know anything. You just proved my point. No, because I have a reason to believe my five senses are working properly. I have a creator God who created me, who made my five senses, who is an orderly being, and therefore I have a, the right precondition for believing my five senses are reliable and trustworthy. You, a product of evolution, chance, chance random mutation over millions and billions of years, you have no reason, no right to believe your five senses are reliable. Therefore, as I said at the beginning, out the God in the beginning, you can't know anything for sure. You can't know anything for sure. For all you know, we're not really having a conversation right now. No one can know anything for sure. How do you know that? You know that for sure? Solipsy. Do you know that for sure? Because you just made a short statement, young man. Yeah, because it's unproven. So you don't know that for sure. So someone could know something, right? It might be, it might not. Exactly. Your, your, your position is self-defeating, young man. Self-defeating. And I've just disproven you logically, and you're still not converting, are you? You know what the real problem is? It's not logic. Your real problem is your heart. You love your sin, you hate God, and you want to disobey Him, and you don't want Him to rule over you. And the Bible says when Christ returns, for all those people who would not have Him to rule over them, He will bind them hand and foot and cast them into the lake of fire. Let's talk about the Bible. You place a lot of faith in the Bible. The Bible is written hundreds of years after Jesus. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. They didn't decide that there. Yes, they did. They voted. They voted that Jesus Christ was. Young man, your historical information is inept. Okay? The early church fathers, people who are writing right after the apostles, they talked about the writings of the apostles. They had them in hand. He's a man who are writing before the turn of the first and second century. They had the writings of the apostles in their hand. They saw them face to face. So they the were disciples of the apostles. They knew them, Jesus. and they wrote about the Trinity. They wrote about Jesus being God and being deity in the flesh. So your your facts are inaccurate. Are they're facts. wrong. I don't know who you're getting them from. Like, and if you get them from your professor your here, nice then obviously accurate. I know why they're wrong. I heard from a young man. Yet I heard from a young man today that his his professor of New Testament Bible is a homosexual. What a contradiction! What an utter contradiction that a homosexual, which the New Testament condemns, is that they will not inherit the kingdom of God, is teaching the Bible. No wonder why there's so much misinformation about the Bible on this campus. No wonder. You don't follow everything that's in the Bible. It'd be immoral to do so. What's that? What would you say, young man? What's the verse about homosexuality in the New Testament? First Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Homosexuals and sodomites will not inherit the kingdom of God. Romans chapter 1, men exchange the natural use of the woman and being flamed in their lusts and using the unnatural use of the man, one with one, man with man, committing what is shameful, unnatural, vile, Romans 1 says. This thing about lesbians. No. 
Yeah, no, no, it's animals not. Animals do it. Yeah, animals yeah. do do it. So you're acting like animals, you're saying? We you are, are animals. animals. <laughs> That's your problem. That's your problem. An I'm not an animal. I'm made in the image of God. I'm a special creation of God. I'm not an animal. You believe in evolution. No wonder. You like See, this proves, this proves, this proves that your ideas will have consequences. Your ideas will affect the way you live. You think you're a f higher forms of animals, therefore you act like animals. No wonder. Do you like titties? No wonder. Everyone has titties. Everyone likes titties. Yeah, I like titties. Do you like titties? That may be a natural situation. Girl, but do you like titties? And so God commands you to repent. Just because animals no, are having woman? homosexual no, sex no, 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 doesn't no, mean no, that you should have homosexual no, the sex. The was that it wasn't natural, and it is indeed natural. It isn't natural. <laughs> natural, it's not. If, if you assume evolution, then it'd be natural, but I don't assume evolution. You're being fallacious once again. I don't assume evolution. Yes, you're getting it. You're getting it. Yeah, you're assuming without any reason. No, I just gave you a reason. The only way you can know anything for sure is if God exists. So if you want to go about knowing nothing for sure and not knowing what reality consists of, then you cannot believe in God if you don't want to. But be consistent because you can't know anything for sure. It's not convenience, it's reality, young man. It's, it's reality. If your reality consisting having right and wrong, an absolute sense, an objective standard of right and wrong, if your reality consists in trusting in your five senses and them being reliable, if your reality consists in trusting the scientific method, believing in uniformity of nature, then you must believe in the beginning God if you're going to be consistent. Now, if you want to be inconsistent, I've already given you the reason why. You you I sure have. You, you, you said, you said we believe because I believe. That's basically what you That said. is not what I said. I said to know anything for sure. I'm scared if God wasn't there. It's very terrifying. What's your question, man? I have a really, really good question for you. How old would you say the Earth is by your belief? About 6,000 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Carbon dating shows the Earth is like... Carbon dating is flawed, been proved flawed. Carbon dating can't even date back that far. Yeah, it can. No, it can't. No, it can't. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Well, well, at least we know it's older Well, I'll tell you this. Carbon dating has been used to date mammoths, and the skin of mammoths will be millions of years older than the actual mammoth itself. That is a flaw. It's been proven inaccurate. That's just one example. I have other examples I have read about. I don't have them off the top of my head. Uh, but I've read about it myself, and you can look into it. But history goes back, like the Egyptian history yeah. goes back thousands of years before Christ. And you've talked about I agree dinosaurs. with that. You, you There's 4,000 years before Christ. You've talked about dinosaurs. So the Egyptians, Cleopatra was riding around on T-Rex. Why don't we have pictures of that? Actually, the book of Job, chapter 40, talks about dinosaurs. Leviathan. Talks about dinosaurs. Leviathan and behemoth, yep. And Leviathan, Leviathan had, a, had a tail like a cedar. There's no animal around today that has a tail Whales like a cedar. Do. What's that? Whales do. They don't have tail like, like a cedar. Like a cedar? It's a big tree. They don't it's have tail. It's a metaphor. <laughs> Technically, no Oh, well, no, it is not. And, and the live thing was a land animal, not a water animal. How do you know? That's what it says in the Bible. Wait, let them explain yeah. dinosaurs. Job chapter 40. Because yeah, they please, walk the earth with man. I would love to hear your opinion on dinosaurs. I just gave it. I just gave it. <laughs> So what, well, well, didn't Job happen after the flood, though? Sure did. Okay. I don't, I don't, think, did I don't think that. I don't think that. All the dinosaurs on his boat? No, that's not what the Bible says about the, the, the boat. They put all the animals on the boat. It says one of every kind of animal, not so one of every species. One of every kind. How'd they well, reproduce? Well, two of every male and female. He had to put dinosaurs on there, though, right? What's that? He had to put dinosaurs on there. Right, but two of every kind of dinosaur. Exactly. Okay, and, and let's let's think about this for a second here. The, the boat is four stories high. Okay. Uh, Noah. Four stories, is, every animal? Uh, if you listen to what I'm saying, man, you'll hear it. All right, okay. Um, I have listened to you. I've listened to you quite a bit. I can't listen to everybody at one time, though. It's kind I'm of difficult. To you. Come on. Okay, so uh, he would have taken younger dinosaurs. They'll last longer. <laughs> they're tougher. They're smaller. They don't produce much garbage to get rid of, and they don't eat as much. How so uh, the Bible doesn't go into details about what kind, uh, what the animals are like. But I would assume to fit them all in the ark that two of every kind of animal, not two of every species now, but two of every kind. That's a basic. Like I would assume that the wolf, the coyote, the dog all came from. There are variations within that kind. Uh, the horse, the zebra, the donkey, the mule, all variations within a kind. But they go back. No, that, that's microevolution, which I believe in. 
I believe in micro evolution, but I don't believe in macro evolution. I don't believe well, you that. But micro evolution traces into the whole the same same kind Yeah, of that's animal. micro evolution. That's not micro. That's sure micro. is. No, micro it is. It's is micro. Like tiny little micro. Micro changes. That's no. what it is. Macro changes. Macro evolution is defined as uh, a single cell organism becoming a fish, becoming an amphibian, becoming a reptile, becoming a bird, becoming a mammal. That's macro evolution. But there's no changing within the kinds in microevolution. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. There's no changing within the kinds in microevolution. So a chihuahua is the same as a St. Bernard? What's that? Yes. Chihuahua and a St. Bernard? They have a, they have a common ancestor, if you oh, go back far enough. So yes. Common ancestor. No common ancestor? No. Yet? Not the same yeah, kind of animal. The They're not the same animal. kind of animal. That's so what makes, what makes a wolf and a domesticated dog the same kind of animal? Uh, it's just obvious. I mean, it's <laughs> obvious. Yeah. So I can look at a orangutan's face, a chimp's face, a gorilla's face. I can look at my own. Oh, that's obvious. So no, like, because we have logic, we have reason. Logic, yeah. logic, 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 logic reason, logic. rationality. We have morality. We have all these things. Don't have have. No, I don't. No, I don't. We're we're made in the image of God. We're special creation. We're the only part of creation that's made in the image of God. What should I do if I'm Jewish? Trust in the Jewish Messiah. Do you, do you read Isaiah? According to the Jews, the Savior has a Do you copy. read Isaiah? I, at one point I have. <laughs> okay, well tell me who this is talking about, Isaiah chapter 53, verses 5 and 6. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we can be healed. All, of, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Who's that talking about? <laughs> we still believe that the Messiah has not come there. How are you going to prove that when you don't have the, the temple records anymore to prove he's a descendant of David? That was destroyed in AD 70. So the Messiah must have come before AD 70 for you to prove it. And so that, that's talking about Jesus there. He was the one who was wounded for your transgressions. He's the one who was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes you can be healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we've turned to our own way, we've all sinned. But the Lord has led in him the of us all. So you can be saved through Jesus Christ. He was your Messiah. He is your Messiah. You need to trust in him. And there's Jews, there's Jews who do trust in him. No, that's not what the Bible says. There's a second coming of the Messiah. And when he comes back the second time, Malachi 4 talks about Elijah coming. He's going to be one of the two witnesses that Revelation 11 talks about. So you just listen, young man. You need to listen for this. The two witnesses will come. Elijah will be one of them, according to Malachi 4, your scriptures. He'll come and try to turn the hearts of the Jews back to their Messiah. But when Christ comes back the second time, I mean, there'll be no more chance to repent then. You need to get right with God today. You need to trust in Jesus Christ. Wasn't the Jewish Messiah supposed to be a military leader? No. No, it was not. They believed that, but they were wrong. Nowhere. In the so what holy makes book. you right? What makes you right? The Old Testament. It's wrong. It's in your goddamn holy book. The Old Testament talks about Christ coming help. back as a ruler of the world, but that's the second coming of Christ. And when Christ comes back the second time, he will rule the Why world did God get it wrong the first with a rod of... He didn't get it wrong the first time. This is his plan the whole time. If he's not a military Always been his plan. Christ didn't come to deliver the, the Jewish people from the Roman oppression. He came to deliver them from the greater enemy, their sin. And he came to deliver every single other person here from their sin as well. But as long as you remain a sinner, you're in trouble with God. You need to stop being fornicators and drunkards. You need to stop being pot users. Stop being homosexuals and sodomites. Stop being religious hypocrites. Stop being thieves and liars. Such people, the Bible says, will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5, This you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. If you're a son of disobedience or a daughter of disobedience, God is going to punish you. He is good and just. He will punish sin. He will punish sinners. But he offers you eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on the cross for you, dying the just for the unjust to reconcile sinners back to God. God takes no delight in the death of the wicked, but rather to turn and live. God wants you to turn and live. God wants you to give up your sin, your fornication, your drunkenness. You're, you're not helping yourself, young men. 
Yeah. You're helping yourself. If your idea of a wonderful yeah. time is sinning, then you're in trouble. God made it. It's not actually occurring. Why can't we smoke it? God made uh, poison ivy. Why don't you smoke that? Hey, you've got a glass wheel. Right over there. Wait, 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 wait. Because you won't get high off it. That's why. Right there. How many people have you actually converted doing this? I don't convert anybody. Oh, okay. You have free will. You have a choice to obey or disobey. This is free will. Yeah, you're right. And you're, there's consequences for that free will. You need to repent or you're going to perish. You need to repent or you're going to perish. No, that the law of the land can come crashing down upon you. It's illegal. Do you believe you're going to heaven? No, I believe I'm going to the kingdom of heaven. Do you believe you're going to heaven? The kingdom of heaven, That's yes. why I'm not a Christian. I don't want to put up with assholes like you all the time. Well, then you'll get your wish. You'll get your wish, young man. You get your wish. All the best people go to hell. All the wicked people go to hell fire. If you're wicked, you'll go there with them, and it won't be a party in hell, friends. There'll be no pot smoking. There'll be no drinking. There'll be no sex. You'll just be burning and weeping and gnashing your teeth. When you're imagine your whole body being on fire. You're not gonna think about sex or drugs or alcohol. You're going to be weeping and gnashing your teeth and being in regret for all eternity that you didn't repent and trust in Christ. That's not very loving. It's not very loving for you to reject his offer of grace and re reject his offer of mercy. It's not very, it's not very loving to reject God's offer of mercy and forgiveness. And it's loving of God to be patient with you and long-suffering towards you, not wanting you to perish, wanting all to come to repentance. It's, it's loving to God to not kill you right now, even though you deserve to die and go to hell right now as a sinner. It's loving of God to give you a second chance. God is judgmental, you're right. Deal with it. Deal with it. God is judgmental. Deal with it. I'm, I'm proclaiming God's judgment. I'm proclaiming God's judgment. But yes, I am qualified to judge. Sure am. I'm proclaiming the truth. The truth sets people free if they obey it. Well, you were turned away before I got here. You're giving me too much credit. You were sinners before I got here. And me preaching the truth and you disliking it and rejecting it does not make you turn away. You were turned away before I got here. And if you don't love the truth, then you're in trouble. Invisible men are illogical. Wait, did you just say Invisible men are illogical? Invisible men like God and Jesus are illogical. So you only believe what you can see, huh? Exactly. So your brain doesn't exist then? You're real smart. You ever seen your brain? Have you ever seen your brain? I can exist. Have you ever seen your brain? It doesn't exist. No, you haven't. You haven't seen your brain. So what? You haven't seen your brain? It doesn't exist. So a brain exists, but your brain doesn't, right? According to the illogic of atheism. According to the illogical of agnosticism. No one has brains. You're pretty good, man. No one has brains right now. Well, you don't have a brain. Because you only believe what you can you see. Have credits, bro? None of us have you're brains, so it's all good. I've seen people's brains. Oh yeah. I know I have a brain. I don't believe in that. I believe in what I can't see. You don't believe in what you can see. I believe in what you can see. Evidence for Wait a minute, that's not what you said. You said you only believe in what you can see. You said, I can't believe guys are invisible, it's illogical. You can't oh, see I, your I, brain, I, I, therefore believing in your brain is illogical according to you. I according to you. So your brain doesn't you exist, Mr. Words. Illogical Man. You can't see his words. You're, you're throwing back his words, <laughs> what she meant, I'm but you're throwing back in different ways. No, no, no. He said he, he only believes, believes in what he can prove. see. He believes in what he can prove. The fact that you even try to prove stuff means you must believe God exists. Because you can't know anything for sure, which is what proving something is, unless God does exist. God's the only rational thing, right? The invisible man. No, no. God made you in his image. That's completely He made you rational beings, but you choose to be a, an irrational, unfortunately, because you have free will. You choose to be irrational. You choose to only believe in what you can see. You've never seen your stomach, but you eat. You've never seen your lung, but you still breathe. Let's assume that God does exist. Why would I not eat just because I can't see my stomach? Because according to you, what you don't see doesn't exist. According to me, I believe what can be proven scientifically. The fact that that you go forth and try to prove stuff scientifically proves that God must exist. Because you're trusting in the reliability of your senses. You're trusting in the reliability of your senses, which is only trustworthy if God created you and made your senses. If you're a product of random chance mutations over millions of years, you have no reason, no right to trust your five senses in being reliable and trustworthy. The reason I've gone through a million times today, but you don't get it. You don't get it. Let's assume that God does You all believe in things that you don't see. You believe in logic, you can't see logic. You engage in it. 
You believe in the scientific method. You believe in the uniformity of Those nature. That is uniform in nature. You can't see the uniformity of nature. You yeah. test it, but you, you can't see it. Scientifically. You believe in morals. You How can't see morals. Tell you. You can't see morals, but you believe in it. You believe in right and wrong, but you can't see that's a concept in your head. You believe in things you can't see. So it's very fallacious to say, well, I don't believe in God because like, I can't see him, but I believe in all the other things. That's very, that's called prejudice. Prejudice or conjecture. And no wonder why you're prejudiced because you don't want God to exist. That's the problem. You don't, no, he does. He does. You don't want him to exist because you'll have to give an account of your life to God. You have to give an account to his standard of right and wrong. And you know you're in trouble. You know you're in trouble. If my God, the God of the Bible, does exist, you're if you're a sinner, you're in trouble. You need to repent. To give up your drunkenness. Give up your drug use. Give up your fornication. Give up your potty mouth. And trust Jesus Christ. Follow Him and obey Him. That's what He commands you to do. What makes you believe that that book is real? Well, I've looked at the other books and they have contradictions in them. My book doesn't. The Bible does not have contradictions. Not one contradiction in my Bible. That's right, not one. God should not kill, but God led his people to war. Yeah, God, God can give authority to kill, but he's, he's the one who's giving life. God can give authority to kill, but God shall not kill. Yeah, God, God gave a governmental system in, Ju in Judaism. That if someone does a certain thing, they were so put God to death. So say you could kill, but then the Ten Commandments say you can't kill. So that's not. A yeah, you can only kill with God's permission. That's not what yes. the Ten Oh, God's coming to me right now. I should kill you. Well, go ahead and do it. You'll see if you're right or wrong. If God came here right now and told you to strike me down right here, God wouldn't do it. God wouldn't do it. That what you see in the Old Testament when they went to war and killed people was God's covenant with the Jewish people for a period of time to bring the Jewish Messiah through them. I am not a Jew. I'm not living under a theocracy. I'm, I'm not living under a Jewish nation. I am a Gentile living in an American nation, so I obey the laws of the land. Which is not a Christian nation. That's nice. It's not a Christian natural law, isn't it? What's that? God's law is above our law, supposedly, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not a Jew. I'm not in a theocracy. It was in that situation only that God commanded to do that. In the new, in the new covenant, that wasn't Christian. God didn't command that. They said it was. Well, so what? What do you mean? Just because they said it wasn't mean it was. Billions of people. Just because they said it was, it wasn't billions of people. There weren't even billions of people around at that point in time. But just because someone says God doesn't mean they actually told them to do it. So how about the Bible? All those people said God told them to write those books of the Bible. So how do you know that those books of the Bible were actually commanded? Or I take it by faith. What? I think it by faith. I have a question. There's, other, re there's other reasons why I believe, too. There's prophecies that have come true. But my, I'm not trying to pr convince you to become a Christian by using the Bible. I've been using philosophy the whole time, and you guys haven't received it. You've rejected it, even though I've refuted you every time. Yes. So it's one thing to believe in Jesus, but how can you put so much faith in something that is man-made and man-written? What's man-made? The Bible. Uh, well, God used men to write the scriptures. But the foundation... The, well, you, I'm asking your question, Leah. You asked a question, let me answer it. You asked a question, let me answer it, and then I'll take another question. Okay? So if the Bible says about itself that it's inspired by God. It's God, the word inspired in the Greek means it's God breathed. You can imagine, just relax for a second. I'm going to ask your question next, and you can be next after that. If you take a trumpet, any musicians here? If you take a trumpet and you blow through it, Tube, okay. You take a tuba and you blow through it. You're the author of the notes that come out the other side. The tuba is just the instrument in your hand to create the musical notes. And so, just hold on a second. I'll get back to you. I'm answering your first question. And so, the Bible claims about itself inspired. Men were instruments in God's hand to write down exactly what he wanted to write down to the exact people he wanted to write to. So, that's what the Bible, that's the doctrine of inspiration. Okay, so my foundation for believing the Bible is not that men wrote it, but that God wrote it down through men. You take a keyboard and write a report today, you're not going to say the keyboard wrote it. You're going to say you wrote it. That is such a political book. King James you're going to say you wrote it, not the keyboard wrote it. So what's your next question, Lenny? So if we're going with your whole tuba metaphor and you blow through the tuba and the tuba makes a note, well, what if you're intending for a 
different, an no, entirely no, different note comes out of the tuba. But a different note comes out, and that's what's recorded. It's not what you meant at all. Well, well, that, the analogy breaks down there. It's not. It's not a. Well, if the analogy breaks down. It's not a very good analogy. Oh yes, it is. Yes, it is. Analogies can be used for their, their purpose. The problem you had with that is that men were made in God's image. God made men, so He knows how to speak to them, communicate to them in such a way where they'll write down exactly what He wants them to write down. So if you have a function in your tube, you're not going to keep on playing like that, are you? Aren't you going to fix it and get it, write notes out of it? So you would. No, it has not been edited. The Bible has not been edited. Give me one example of that. The King James Bible right there. Give me one example of the Bible being edited. King James. Give me one. The original copy of the Bible said the word man in it once. They what in it once? Damn. Where did it say that? No, I've read it online. Wait, oh, you read it online? It must be true. Right? You read it the book is here. It must be true. And where was this Where was this word damn found at? I don't know, but I don't know. This is this is their basis of rejecting the Bible. This one thing you read on the internet that you don't know where it's from. You have no evidence for it. You have no evidence for it at all. And this is your basis for rejecting eternal life, for rejecting Jesus Christ. I didn't say I'm rejecting it, but I don't believe in the Bible. Well, then you're rejecting it. That's where the gospel comes from, the Bible. You're rejecting the Bible, and your basis for rejecting it is that flimsy. That tells me you have a bias, and you don't want it to be true. That's the problem. You have no real basis for denying the Bible, for saying it's contradiction or it's not true. Your basis is I don't like the Bible. That's your basis. You don't want it to be true. Because if it was true, oh, you like the Bible? You want it to be true? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. Oh, you 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 like the Bible then? The one you were criticizing the second though, you actually like it? Because it's a good fairy tale. How about that? There you go. I knew you didn't like it. No, it does not. Yes, he's from Nazareth in his older age. They moved to Nazareth. He was not born in Nazareth. And the Bible never says that. You are wrong. And you can't prove that. He was born in Bethlehem. He was from Nazareth because he moved there later on. Don't you know the story? In Bethlehem, they were going to kill. Herod was going to kill Jesus. They went to Egypt. And when they came back, they didn't go to Bethlehem. That's not even where they were from. They went back to Bethlehem for the census. It's not even where Joseph or Mary was from. That's where the census was. The census. So when they came back from Egypt, they came to Nazareth. That's where he grew up. He was born in Bethlehem. He was raised in Nazareth. There's no contradiction there. It's amazing. All the people here who reject the Bible, and you can't give me one contradiction? All the contradictions in the Bible, and you can't give me one? And you're rejecting it? I got one. Amazing. Amazing. What's your question, young man? Yep. If Jesus is Jewish, why are you Christian? Hold on, I'm listening to him. Hold on. He was such a cool guy. He was nice. Okay, so your your question. Let me make sure I understand your question. You're saying Jesus came, and he never asked to be worshipped or prayed, right? Correct. Prayed to. And that Christianity simply idolized him and they've done wrong. That, that's your the statement? Council of Nicaea, yeah. That he was Jewish and followed all Jewish and customs, to which the number one of the commandments is... Yeah, I know the number one command. Sure. We shall have no other God. Sure, there's only one God. Yeah, I understand. I've read the Shema. But, but... A religion based around... Are, are you a are you a Jew? Okay, so do you believe the Messiah is going to come? Okay, well that's what the, that's what the Old Testament teaches. Well, let me give you Isaiah 53, 5 and 6, what I gave the other Jewish young man earlier. You can tell me who he's talking about, okay, if you don't mind, or at least your opinion on it. Okay, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone away. And the Lord is laid on him, the iniquity of us all. Who is that talking about? Well, that's what I think. Yeah. Well, actually, in John 8 58, okay, Jesus is talking to Jewish people here. He says, Before Abraham was, I am. 
<laughs> now, what they would have gotten from that, and what they did by their response, is that he's claiming to be Yahweh. He's claiming to be the I Am who spoke to Moses in the burning bush and said, Who should I say sent me, Lord? Tell them I Am sent you. And Jesus, they were questioning how old he is. Because he said, I, you know, he was before Abraham. He's not even 30 years old yet, they said. And so he said, before... That's what I'm saying. That's what Jesus claimed. Before Abraham was, I am. And so he's claiming to be before Abraham. The only way someone can be before Abraham, they're only 30 years old, living in 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years after Abraham, or whatever it was. Uh, I don't know the exact date, young man. So anyway, the only way he could do that is if he pre-existed. And he's claiming to be I am. What they did, they took up stones to stone him. They, they considered him... That's what I'm talking about. So he did exist before he came into this world. That's what his claim was. And you're saying he didn't claim that. I'm telling you he did claim that. And the whole reason the Jewish people wanted to put him to death... Huh? No, he was Jewish. He's the Messiah. He's the Son of God. If any man claimed that, if any regular man claimed that, you're right. They would not be Jewish by definition. But he was not a regular man. He's the Son of God and God the Son in the flesh. That's his claim about him. So that's the very reason why they wanted to put him to death. They considered him a blasphemer. <laughs> no, no, that's that's the Roman part, the Jewish part. No, they considered him a blasphemer. They were, well, young man, they were questioning him at the council, and he claimed to be the Son of God. They tore their clothes that this is blasphemy. It says right here, in Matthew 26, he says, in verse 63, the high priest asks him the question. He says. It says right now, he says, I put you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are Christ, the Son of God. He says this. It is as you said. Nevertheless, I say to you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further do we have, with, have need of witness? Look, now you have heard this blasphemy. That's why they wanted him put to death. They accused him of blasphemy. He claimed to be the son of God. He claimed to be the I, Abra Abra the I am before Abraham was. And not only that, his own followers worshipped him. He didn't correct them or stop them. Thomas didn't see him when he first appeared after his resurrection. He said, I will not, I will not believe he exists till I see the side, I see the holes in his hands and his feet. Jesus appears to him. Look, Thomas, look. He goes down and he says, Lord, my God. He didn't correct them. So yes, Jesus claimed to be God in the flesh, the Son of God and God the Son, the Messiah, and that is the very reason the Jewish people wanted to kill him and have him put to death. They thought he was a blasphemer. Now, when they went to the Roman people, they said, oh, he's a threat to to be a king, he's a threat to the Roman king. They did that to manipulate the Romans to put him to death. So I would encourage you, man, to trust in your Messiah. Jesus Christ, the Messiah of the Jews and the Gentiles. He wants you to be saved. He wants to forgive you and to cleanse you. He wants you to have eternal life. Oh, he will in the end. He will in the end. When he comes back the second time, he's going to install his kingdom upon earth, the new Jerusalem. Yeah, but the same Messiah is coming back the second time. Oh, that's what he's going to do. That's what the Bible says. But the Bible says about the Messiah. He's coming back a second time. And the inheritance of Abraham, the inheritance of Abraham, the promised land, is still offered to you, the new Jerusalem. But you must receive it by faith in Jesus Christ because he is the seed of Abraham. He's the one you must trust in. If you're not in Christ, according to the Bible, you have no eternal life. You have to be in him because he is the inheritor. He's the one who will inherit the promised land. And if you want to take part in that inheritance, you must trust. You must be in Him because you and I have sinned. We've been disqualified from the inheritance. But Christ never sinned. He's the only one qualified for the inheritance, for the promised land. If you want to take part in that inheritance, you must trust in Him. You must abide in Him. You must go in Him and in His sacrifice. He's the Passover lamb who shed His blood for you. What does that mean? But he's the son of God. He's the Messiah. You know the son of God. The Messiah is not going to sin, according to your own belief. That's nice. So I want you to repent, man. Get right with God. Trust in Christ. Forsake your sin. The Bible says we came from Adam and Eve, two people, right? Uh huh. So how many times removed do 
we have to be before it's incest because we're all brothers and sisters. Well, first of all, incest was not a rule or a law. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. We all came from two years. You're gross, man. I'm going to try to answer your question, I'm going to move on. There was no law against incest until Moses, which is thousands of years later. And so, of course, of course, but let's, let's think about your, you're an atheist. It does matter because you believe we came from rocks. And for, according to you, we have a common ancestor too. According to you, we're all brothers and sisters too. We have a common ancestor, right? So according to you, your problem still isn't solved. Your problem still isn't solved if you don't believe the Bible. You believe we all came from a common ancestor. You still have the same problem, sinner. You still have the same problem. Your problem isn't solved by rejecting the Bible, rejecting Genesis. Your problem isn't solved by rejecting the Bible, rejecting Genesis. You still have the same problem. According to you, you're still committing incest. Sir, she has a question. Well, you need to repent. Your potty mouth need to repent. Give up your sins. I have repented. I've trusted in Christ. I'm obeying Him. I'm following Him. I don't go to church. I am a part of the church. The church is not a building. The church is a living, breathing, true people of God. I didn't say I was the Lord. I said I'm part of the church. I'm sorry. I have a, I have a really quick question. What's your question, Lee? Back up and I'll answer your question. Back up. I really like your glasses, and I just want to know where I can score a sweet pair. Like, <laughs> I got these from Philippines. What's your question, young man? Yeah, I've noticed you've been rather prominently waving that tome of yours around. And can you back up a little bit, young man? Are you feeling threatened? No, no, I'm just asking you to back up a little bit. I spit right. when I speak sometimes. I don't want, you, I want to spray it. All right, all right, all right. How about you just listen? Just, uh, Anyhow, and I've noticed that that tome you keep waving around, it, it's just on the tip of my tongue. It occurs to me. Have you actually read it? The Bible? Yeah. I'd read the New Testament probably a hundred times through. The Old Testament at least ten times, probably twenty times. That's just a guess. Yes, I've read it through many times. So are you dyslexic or something? I'm going to move on. The Bible says to repent or you will perish. Jesus said to go and sin no more lest a worse thing happen to you. If you stay a drunkard or a fornicator or a homosexual or a sodomite, all that will happen to you is worse things. You're in trouble with God if you're a sinner. But God commands you to repent. God is patient with sinners, wanting none to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Christ shed his blood for the ungodly. God demonstrates his love toward you. That while you're yet a sinner, Christ died for you. Christ offers you forgiveness of sin, cleansing of sins, and pardon of sins. But it's only found in Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. He's the only name given under heaven by which man can be saved. If you try to come to God the Father through any other way, you're called a robber and a thief. He is the door. He is the way. He is the gate. The only way God's provided for a sinner to be forgiven of their sins is through Jesus Christ. The only way God's provided for a sinner to be reconciled back to God is through Jesus Christ. God commands you to repent. Your sin is going to cost you your soul. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Your sin will cost you your soul. What your sin will earn you, what you'll get paid for your sin job is a place in the everlasting lake of fire. And there's not one exit. You know, these, these, buildings, these buildings have exits, fire exits. But there's not one fire exit out of the hellfire. There's no fire exit. It lasts forever. Either. You'll be there forever if you go there, friends. Forever. And you only have today. You're, You're not guaranteed Blessed. tomorrow. Blessed. You're not guaranteed the Blessed. next day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Oh if you hear his voice, if you hear his one. voice, you should repent. Yeah. You can yeah. give up your sins. I got a question. Your sins will never do you any question. good. No, I've said that yeah. before. Give up your sins. Question. Why would any just God let just okay, take one person, put him in heaven. Why would any just God let them just live an eternal like wonderful life in heaven while their loved ones are suffering eternally in hell? Because they reject the only means God's provided for forgiveness. That's you can't use it. It's not. You sinned oh, against God, you all deserve hell. Every single one of us deserve well, hell. Do. I sure do. I deserve hell. I deserve it. I was a fornicator. I was a drunkard. I was a potty mouth. I was filthy and wicked. But God changed me. God changed me. He forgave me. He cleansed me. I'm a new creature in Christ. The old things have passed away. The old all has become new. I've been changed by Jesus Christ. And He can change you as well if you let Him. You'll give up your sin, submit yourself to God, humble yourself before God, 
and he will lift you up. The Bible says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. You double-minded, lament and mourn and weep. Let your laugh return to mourning, your joy to glue. Humble yourself in the sight of God, and he will lift you up. Humble yourself. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. They're not humble. This guy's not humble at all. How do you know that? You're a hypocrite. How do you know I'm a hypocrite? He has sweet glasses Well, you're, you're judging people. <laughs> That's not hypocrisy. My religion allows me to judge. How, how do you feel humble? My religion allows, allows me to judge, so I'm not a hypocrite. Hey, yesterday you called me a homo, and I didn't even say I was a homo. I never talked to you yesterday. I don't even know yes, what you're talking about. Yes, you did. About. You did talk to me I never yesterday. talked to you. Yes, you did. Where did I talk to you? Dude, right over there. No, I wasn't. I was over there, and I was over there. Were you here yesterday prophesizing? Were you here yesterday prophesizing? I did not preach this like I'm doing right now. I was over there. And I was over there, working the camera and held the banner over there. I did not call anyone a homosexual who didn't call it themselves no, first. Sir, you did call me a homosexual. Oh, I did. You're a liar. You're a liar. God commands you to repent. God commands all men everywhere to repent to the coming of day which he will judge the world in righteousness. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man? The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul in the end? It's not going to profit you any in the end, friends. Jesus if you cling to your sin either. straight to the grave, I'm going to and go to hell Christian. for it, it's not going to profit you in eternity, friends, if you continue in sin and go to hell for your sin. I admonish you to repent. I plead with you to get right with God, to give up your sin and follow Jesus Christ. You know what? You're, you're not Christian, you're Muslim. Say that again. <laughs> Have you heard the gracious words of Yeah, God created every person, <laughs> but He created it with a free will. Inshallah. Yeah, God has foreknowledge exhaustively of all future events. Well, because He desired so much the relationship with those who would choose Him, and all the people who, who have not chosen Him, that's their choice, that's not His choice. But certainty of knowledge is not equal necessitating their action. They still have contingency, they still have free will. Sure, that doesn't, so what? No, no, God's not condemning, they could, well, he condemned them for their choices. Sure. That is, yeah. Because that would, that would be no free will. They have free will. The question for you, young man, for, the question for you is this. Even though God knows where you're going to go, you have a choice right now. Why won't you repent? That is the question. That's the main question. Why won't you repent? Why won't you give up your sin? You know the truth. You've heard about Jesus Christ shedding his blood for your sins. Why won't you give up your sin to follow him? What's that? Well, that, that's your choice. You've chosen to be an atheist. God didn't make you that way. You've chosen to be an atheist. God wants you to stop being foolish in your thinking and trust in Him and follow Him. <laughs> Young man, you're responsible for your actions. If you are condemned, it's because you've chosen to be a sinner. You've chosen to be an atheist. God did not make you that way. And when you stand before, listen to me, when you stand before God on Judgment Day, if you haven't repented, you have no excuse before God. You almost say, God, well, you knew I was going to go to hell. Why did you create me? He's going to say, why didn't you trust in my son? Why didn't you repent of your sins? Why didn't you give up your sins and become a Christian? That's what God's going to ask you. And you'll have nothing to judge God with. That's right. That's the point I've been making. Yes, but you right now have contingency. You have free will. You can choose. Yes, just because he knows doesn't mean you have force to do it. No one's forcing you to be an atheist, young man. No one's forcing you to be a sinner. You you do it your own accord. You choose to do it. Yes, God knows. God commands you to repent. Yes, young man. But God commands you to repent. God commands you to give up your sin. All right, so what do you think? Jesus said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing happen to you. Go and sin no more, lest a worse thing happen to you. The Bible says, adulterers and adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? 
Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Do you follow our Bible? Right here. You just trust Jesus Christ. Christ, you just shed his blood for you. He demonstrated his love for you on the cross by dying for you on the cross. He God to love the world. He gave his only begotten Son that our believers in should not perish but have everlasting life. God offers you eternal life. He offers you forgiveness. There's no good reason to reject it. There's no good reason to stay a sinner. There's no good reason to reject the grace and love of God expressed through Jesus Christ at the cross. There's no good reason to stay a fornicator or a drunkard or a potty mouth. There's no good reason to stay a homosexual, a sodomite, or a drug user. No good reason to say those things. You need to give up your sin. Trust in Jesus Christ and follow him and serve him. You'll have no excuse on judgment day. You'll have no excuse on judgment day, friend. You're going to stand before the one to whom you must give account. Who sees your, your thoughts. Who's heard every idle word. Who knows all your deeds. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is man's all. For God will bring every work in the judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. God is going to bring every work in the judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. God is going to judge your life, friends. Even the secret thing you think no one else knows about, all you porn watchers. God's going to judge your life. All you lustful people, God's going to judge your heart, your life, your motives. All you selfish people, those who hate people in their heart, the Bible calls it murder at heart. Speak up, the heathens in the back. When you lust for people, God calls it adultery of the heart. And God's going to condemn them. The Bible says no adulterer has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. No adulterer, no fornicator, those having sex outside of marriage. You know, if you're having sex with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you don't love them. You don't love them if you're having, if you're having sex with your girlfriend or boyfriend. You don't love them. You lust them. In fact, you hate them because you're sending you and them to hell by your activity with them. You know, these days people talk about safe sex. They say, well, let's get some condoms, we'll have safe sex. Well, you need to know some young people that, that condoms don't protect from every disease there is. They've worked every time I've used them. The HIV, <laughs> HIV passes right through condoms. No, it doesn't. What the hell? It sure does. So you're in danger. You're in danger. Wait, did you say condoms if, don't protect you if from you AIDS? Use, you're a fucking idiot. If you use condoms for safe sex, realize this. You may get a disease you don't want. You said you're not a Catholic. But there's a disease that's worse than AIDS. There is an STD that's worse than AIDS. There's an STD that stays with you even when you're dead. Condoms won't protect you from this STD. It's sexually transmitted damnation. And every fornicator has it right now. And unless you repent, you will perish. Unless you repent, you'll remain in this STD forever and ever. What STD? Any sex outside of marriage. If not say we are all fucked. In a monogamous marital relation between a male and a female. What if your wife has It's sad that I have to define that, but it's true. Any sexual activity outside of a monogamous marital relation between a male and a female, you have the STD of sexually transmitted damnation. And as you go on in your sins. You store up wrath for yourself on a day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. God's going to render to each man according to his deeds. You need to repent while you have time. You need to stop being a fornicator. You need to stop being a drunkard. You need to stop being a pot smoker. No! You need to stop being a potty mouth. It's healthier than alcohol. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Hey, repent or perish. I repent to my hand. Give me one good reason why you won't hands. repent. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas is in December. It was made for the pagans. I don't believe in Christmas. It's a pagan holiday. I don't believe in Christmas. Not, uh, Christmas is a pagan holiday. We don't even know exactly when Christ was born. I don't celebrate his birth. Amen. No, I'm not. Where does the Bible command me to celebrate Christ's birth? And where does the Bible say when he was born? 
Uh, hey, hug. No, don't touch me. Christmas is a pagan holiday. Nothing to do with that. I want a hug. No? No, the Bible doesn't Let's command you to celebrate his birth. I don't have a problem with you doing it, but I don't have to do it. The Bible doesn't command me to do it. In fact, we don't even know exactly when he was born. Probably October or April. So to celebrate in December... I hate I mean, Jesus! What, what, I hate what Jesus! What month were you born in? So let's say we celebrate your birthday in September. You know, Wouldn't usually, make much sense, would it? Jesus, Some people are doing. He was probably born in October, and you're celebrating December 25th, which is the very day of a pagan holiday. We got a question over here. Hey, you didn't answer my other question. You don't have to repent. I didn't say that you couldn't celebrate Jesus' birth. Everyone said that. I'm just saying, and I'm just saying that I have the choice not to repent, and I don't think I'd be a better guy. Don't if you don't repent, you're going to perish. I don't care. Well, then you'll perish. You'll go to hell. There's no hell. There's no hell. No worries, guys. Hey, do you think you want to be there? I think you want to be there. What's that? Well, then you got your wish. You got your wish. God commands you to repent. Commands you to give up your sin. I think it might be more fun right. if you share Christ's love. And I'm sharing Christ's love. I've been saying it the whole time. Christ does not accept all people. Christ was not the Messiah. Christ only accepts those who repent, who give up their sin. I think you just need If you're not willing to give up your sin, you are not accepted by God. You're going to hell. You are not accepted by God. If you don't repent, give up your sin and trust in Christ as sacrifice on the cross. Can I repent? Will you give me a hug? No. <laughs> give up your sin. Aren't you supposed to be spreading love? Follow Jesus Christ. Love is not a hug. Love is not a kiss. Love is, love is not sex. Love is wanting the greatest good for people, and your greatest good is to repent of your sins and to follow Jesus Christ. Your greatest good is to stop disobeying God and start obeying God. The, I like the disobeying. The the well, that's why you're going to hell. <laughs> well, you can believe it doesn't make it disappear. You saying it doesn't, doesn't make it go poof, disappear. What good is heaven if you can't have It exists whether you believe it or not. What's the point of heaven if you have to be... Monotheism is evil. That's who? Well, it's just ridiculous. Why is there a... God, who's so petty, and who would send you to hell? Why would he even care if you go fuck a girl or a guy? Because he has laws and rules to obey. There are no such. That's like a that's like a lawbreaker in this universe saying, "Well, who cares about rape? I want to rape people. Who cares about child abuse? I want to do it." That's like what you're saying. Well, the laws of the land care about it, but the law of God, the law of God says not to do those things. Most people are born with an innate sense that certain things are wrong in life. Have you come to that conclusion yet, or are you just too thick-headed? Oh, well, people do have an innate sense, but it's called their conscience. The Bible talks about this. God's law written upon your heart. So, yes, I agree with that, but it doesn't come from evolution. It doesn't come from animals. It doesn't come from millions and billions of years of chance random mutations. Yes, it comes from Jesus Christ. It comes from God. God decides what is right and wrong. Right and wrong is a reflection of his character. Evolution is truth. Right and wrong is a reflection of his character. And if you don't obey God, you're going to perish. There's consequences for your actions. There's consequences for your actions. Well, I'm, that's exactly what I want my neighbor to do to me if I was a sinner. Exactly. That's exactly what I want my neighbor to do to me if I was you. I want the priest of truth to me. Because by the truth, you can be set free. That means either one of two things. Either you have a major inferiority complex or you're disobeying God right now. God commands you to repent. God commands me to preach the gospel to all creation, which is what I'm doing. The earth is flat. It's a lie. Because <laughs> well, the Bible says so. The scientists are evil. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> if they're not following God's law, wouldn't that mean scientists are evil? Uh, yes, but not all scientists do that. You said scientists together, all together are evil. I don't agree with that. There's Christian scientists. The scientists who obey God's law, who follow God, and who worship Him. Uh, but if you're disobeying God, of course you're evil. That's the definition of evil, disobeying God. What's your question, man? I mean, you know what I mean? It's like giving an inventory. Yeah, I went to the Catholic school. If I got the highway, I'd be free. Yeah. You were lied to. Well, I'm hungry. I think yeah, I should eat. You were lied to. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15. He doesn't even believe in God anymore. Uh, if he ever did. But 1 Corinthians 2 15 says, The spiritual man judges all things, and he himself is rightly judged by no man. So I follow the Bible, that Roman Catholic religion, and the Bible says I can judge. Now there's kind of, there, there are judgments. There are there are judgments that God's against. Okay? Hypocritical judgment, for example. If I went out last night and got drunk and said drunkards are going to hell, that's a hypocritical judgment. That's God's against that. 
Yeah. God's against judging according to appearance. If I saw a man walk by in a pink shirt and called him a homosexual, that'd be judging according to appearance. Sir! That would be unrighteous judgment. So, uh, there are judgment that God's against, but the judgment God is for is that righteous judgment, judgment according to his word, the proclamation, the proclamation of his truth. And so I'm warning you of God's judgment, out of love for you, that the wrath of God is coming, I don't believe in genes. the wrath of God. Well, I have judged some people today, but uh, what I, for the most part, what I'm doing is I'm proclaiming God's judgment. Well, that's fine if you want to believe that, but that's not what the Bible says. I obey the Bible, not what you say. Well, I believe what the Bible says, not what you say. Yeah, so I, 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 whether I can judge or not, if you're going to judge me according to my own religion. I'm going to judge. The Bible says you're judging me according to your own your own opinion. Come on, man. So you're actually being more judgmental than I am. Oh, I don't think you're based. No, dude. What's that? I don't think this No, but I'm saying, but you're you're trying to keep me accountable to what I believe. And what I believe, what the Bible says, that I can judge. So judgment is not a sin. I don't know what he. Judging is a sin if you judge hypocritically according to appearance. You're different than he is. No, he's not on the stone thing. No, you judge righteously. Okay, so if someone says, I'm a fornicator, I can tell them, right now you're going to hell. I'm warning them. And that you need to repent or you're going to perish. That's the judgment that the Bible says I can't engage in. Okay? I'm not just throwing judgment. I'm judging according to the Bible. And I'm not saying that I have the authority to ask. I'm not going to be casting you into hell. God's going to do that. But I'm declaring what God says he's going to do as a warning to you. I don't want you to perish. Yeah, that's your favorite band. Are you Jesus? My favorite band? Are you going to heaven? I don't really, I don't know if I have a favorite band. You gotta have a favorite band. I, I like Keith band. Green. I like, uh, I like Sayla. It's a musical group. I like, uh, the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> no, I don't like, I don't like anything Mormon. <laughs> got a question right here. Oh, oh, I have sinned many times, yes. Oh, yeah. have you now? Then how come you're not going to perish? Because I stopped it. I know. You stop. Like, you don't can't stop sinning. No. Yes, you can. No, we're going into sin, remember? No, I don't believe that, remember? You don't remember? Oh, no. I don't believe that. Uh, yeah, sin is a choice. Okay. It says in the Bible you're uh, born in the sin. No, it doesn't say that. Yes, it does. It does. Give, me the Bible, give me the verse. Huh? Give me the verse. I don't give a fuck about your verses. Well, it then, says that. You don't even know the Bible says. That's your problem. Adam and Eve sin. Therefore, everyone else is sinners. No, you're not accountable for anyone else's sin. You're accountable for your own sin. You're sin alone. You're not accountable for your parents' sin, your grandparents' sin, or for Adam and Eve's sin. You're accountable for your own sin. That's it. So if we but it's a choice, so and I can choose a sin or not. Now I'm tempted every day to sin. So if we don't, but I have a choice to make. If we don't, and I can choose every single day for the rest of my life to never sin again. Now, what's going to happen or not yet to be seen? My purpose at this point in time is to never sin again. But I have many temptations yet to come, and I have many choices yet to make. It's not a one-time choice in the past to never sin again. You're making choices every single day not to sin. And so I've chosen not to sin. I have since I've become a Christian. It's my own shame. Uh, I just said I have. I have sinned. No, I've repented, young man. I've repented. And so, so right now I'm not sinning, and I plan to never do it again. Now, if I sin again, I have to repent. If I don't repent and I die on my sin, even though I was a Christian, now I'm going to go to hell. All right, so let Same me, rules let apply me, to me. So may I ask you something? Not right now. You're, it's a question. Uh, they're already condemned. I'm just warning them of their condemnation. Yes. The sinners. So your goal is to bring other people to Christ, right? No, my goal is to preach the truth. So you don't want to make people... If you come to Christ or not, it is your choice. If you come to Christ or not, it's your choice. I can't make you come to Christ. So what is your goal? To preach the truth. To present the truth to people and allow them to decide for themselves what to do with it. Or are they going to believe in and be set free and obey Christ? Or are they going to continue in lies and deception and go to hell? The only truth to preach is why they're going to hell. That's not all I've preached on men. I preach the grace and mercy of God all day. And we've talked about science and apologetical things all day. You may have just gotten here, so you may have not seen that. I've been up here for an hour and a half at least. I've the articles I've talked to my friends. I'm a Christian too, I just don't. 
see the, the benefit in preaching like this to other college students. Well, I'm sorry. This is all throughout the Bible. Them hate you. Oh, they hate. They hated people. John seven seven. This is Jesus now. The whole world hates me. I testify of it that his works are evil. And he said, Matt, listen, 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 man, listen. Okay. So Jesus said that the whole world hated him. So they testified of it that his works are evil. And in Matthew 10, he said, a disciple is not above its teacher. A servant is not above his master. If they call me Beelzebub, what will they do to you? Okay, so if you're going to follow in the steps of your master, the world will hate you. I'm not saying I'm trying to get the world to hate me, but I am saying this. If you preach the whole counsel of God, they will, naturally, because they're sinners and they love their sin, they will hate you. If the world doesn't hate you, you're not like your master. He preached in the open air and public places. He didn't hold up a banner that said you're going to go to hell. He didn't have banners back then. He preached about hell all the time. No banners. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. 5 through 7. Sermon on the Mount. He preached on hell over and over again in that sermon. He, was, he preached on, in fact, in that sermon, he never once preached about heaven. Never once preached about God's love or about God's mercy. He preached about sin, judgment, and hell. All throughout Matthew 5, chapter 5 through 7. And if you get a... Well, actually, the only time Christ mentions God's love for all of humankind is in one verse in the Bible. Only time Christ mentions it, he mentions it to one man. Nicodemus in John 3, 16. Now, I've preached about God's love many times today. Many times. And people to to don't listen. Don't, yes, if you don't repent, you're going to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to repent. Well, that's God. If you don't think God's loving to send you to hell, I some people are so college students are supposed to see this. They're supposed to realize. It's entertainment. They're supposed to realize that they are. So you think this is foolish? Yes. Oh, completely. Well, then you're, then you're perishing according to the Bible. The Bible says in First Corinthians that the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. The preaching of the gospel, the public proclamation, what the word preaching means. The public proclamation of the gospel, <laughs> if it is foolishness to you, then you are perishing for so, the Bible. So I accept Christ as my Lord and Savior, which I think is what will God doesn't need your acceptance, young man. You need his acceptance. He doesn't need your acceptance. You need his acceptance. That is wrong. You need his acceptance. sick thing, I think. You say you Are you still living in sin? You know... I am I'm sinful by human nature. I sin every Then you're day. going to hell. You need to stop sinning. You uh, repent so of your own sin. Human. That's right. I obey God. You cannot be perfect. That's so surprising. This is so embarrassing to other Christians. You're not a Christian man. That's why it embarrasses you. That's why it embarrasses you. Because you're living in sin. You're living in sin every day. He's a better Christian than me. Well, says you. I don't, I don't judge myself by your standard. I don't judge myself by that your standard. Was, that was pretty judgmental. So I don't know what you said. You are judgmental. You're so obsistent. Everybody, you don't even know that word. You're so obsistent. That's what you are. Oh, Everything so you know a vocabulary word I don't know, and that makes you, what, smarter than me? Or? Actually, probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know right to judge you. You need to repent. You need to stop your sin. You don't listen no more. How do you know? Stop your sin. You've never had a bad thought. I have a lot in the past, but I've stopped it. You need to stop it. You stop your sinning. Why won't you stop? You can't stop thinking. What I'm sin can't you stop away. doing, man? Hey, if you want to stop thinking, get a rock and hit your head. No one said you couldn't you think. You have a conscience. Okay. Who said? Why? What sin can't you stop doing, man? I want to hear it. Sometimes I see people walking down the street and I think they look ridiculous, or I. You can't stop by the way they look. You can't stop that. It's no. instinct. No, no, you can stop it. The Bible says in Second Corinthians reaction. chapter ten, verse four and five. Take captive every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. But at times every thought. You so, fall yes, you should strive to do that. But it's not, it's so not achievable. You're striving for the impossible? I don't strive for the impossible, I strive for the possible. And God doesn't command the impossible either. 1 John 5 3. This is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. His commandments are not burdensome. You're telling me they're burdensome. I'm telling you they're not. The Bible says, if you love me, John 14, 15, Jesus speaking here, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But you don't follow all the commandments. You say you're sinning every day, therefore you don't love them according to Jesus' own word. I'm allowed to judge. The Bible, I've already gone through that. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. By this, we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Wait, you now the definition, them? the very opposite of keeping God's commandments, is sinning every day. So according to 1 John 2, 3 through 4, you don't know God if you're sinning every day. Now I hope you're really not sinning every day. I hope you're just saying it because you've been taught that. But if you are sinning, like you profess to be doing, you're in trouble. You don't know God, 
and you're on your way to hell. I don't want that for you, man. I want you to repent. Is that about weak? We have the same Holy Spirit available. Every Christian has the same Holy Spirit. And Galatians 5, 16 said, if you walk according to the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Muhammad was the messenger. So walk according to the Spirit. Yes, you can. In fact, Jesus commanded you to be perfect. In Matthew 5, 48, I get feedback from people about this. I do get some, but I don't expect lots of good that. I don't expect lots. Hold on. I, I the most question. of the world is going but, to hell. Billy Graham doesn't get a lot of good Billy Graham's a false teacher. Listen, listen. Heaven so, is hell so too. Wanna, Spirit, so we all have the same Holy Spirit. I don't want to pray to God at 24 So we all have the same power available. Like and the Bible says in Philippians 4.13, you can do all That's things through Christ. I've been telling you I'm not a Christian. So you can do all things. So if you really are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, you can you can produce much fruit, like John 15 says. If you abide in Christ and, and, you, and Him and you, you will produce much fruit for His glory. True or false? But wait, wait, wait. So you must abide in Him. You say you say you preach the truth. But how do you know that it's the truth? Like, do you do you feel it in your heart? It comes from God. It comes from God. What if what if you don't feel God? You don't have what to feel God. Exactly. There is no without without God just like, you can. No. Without God existing, you couldn't know anything. So why, wait, why exactly. is Billy Graham a false teacher? I want to know Show that. Me where because he, he said there's another you. way to the Father besides through Jesus Christ. Which was what? what when, when Jesus said in John 14, 6, <laughs> that I am the way, definite article, the truth. I just told you that and you said that that's not the way to heaven. What's that? I, I said I believe that you know my faith is backed up by taking Jesus Christ as my Savior, and you said I'm not oh, no, referring that's not, to belief. No. I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to him saying there's another way to salvation besides through Jesus Christ. Now, if you want to be in Christ, young man, and he talks about in John 14:6, you have to repent. Don't you also? I do repent sins. daily. Then you're not really repenting. If someone came up to you, and you have good friends, right? If a good friend came up to you and punched you in the eye and said, I'm sorry, he kept on doing it every day and saying he was sorry every day, you wouldn't believe he was really sorry. And if you really are sorry for your sin, you're going to stop it. No, because there's a difference. Because if my friend is knowingly, every day, he knows he's going to keep punching me in the face continually, <laughs> then I don't think that his repentance is true. But if they're, you know, sinning and... They sometimes, you know, it's just their human nature and they're striving to get rid of that. It's sin is not human nature, different. sin is a choice. Always has been, always will be. God God made you. The Bible says He knitted you together in your mother's womb. God did not make you sinful. And God will not punish people for the way He made them. God made you an innocent baby and you've been born to a world where there's sinful people around who've influenced you and you've chosen to sin. So you never have to repent. If I sin, I'll have to repent. But if I don't sin, of course but you I don't, don't sin. sin anymore. That That's right. That mean I can sin in the future. I have free will, I'm tempted every day, so there's a, always a possibility of sinning. But there's always also a, a possibility of not sinning. Transgression of God's law. So you follow all of God's laws? Who tempts you? I got all the moral laws of God. A lot of the Old Testament laws, like the, the dietary laws, the clothing laws, the governmental so, laws, so you choose which laws they don't know I'm interpreting the Bible properly. They don't apply to me. How do you know it's proper? Because I'm, How do you know I'm not picking and choosing. And if you want to talk one at a time, I'll reply. Okay? I'm not How do you know that it's being interpreted? God commands you to repent. Can I ask you a question, please? You mentioned earlier that, like, your friend kept getting your face really, like, forgive him. Well, that's like a human example. God and Jesus is not, like, that's not a human example. You can't compare God's forgiveness for our sin and Jesus' love. God gave his son to die and sacrifice for our sin. You better believe that man loves us. And you can't even compare our basic human interactions to the forgiveness that Jesus has. You missed it. You missed the analogy, young lady. The, 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 the point, the point of, you missed the point of the analogy. The point of the analogy was this. If you kept punching your friend in the face and telling him sorry, he would not believe you were sorry. God's infinitely more wise than your friend. You keep punching God in the face by your sin and saying, I'm sorry, God, pain. I'm sorry, God, I'm going to keep on disobeying you. I'm sorry. I don't want to disobey, but I'm going to keep on disobeying anyway. You're not really sorry. You don't really care about your sin against God. If you really cared about your sin against God, you would stop it like he tells you to. Well, we try, but we can't. Wait a minute. Hey, we can't go against like our natural human. Design. Sin is not natural. Sin is in that. I'm not unnatural. What's in natural? You're natural. Sin is unnatural. <laughs> sin is unnatural. Sin is, sin is, sin is against your nature. You're made in God's image, and because you're made in God's image, sin is unnatural to you. And so you should never sin. That's why your conscience rejects it. Your body rejects. Your sin. So why did Jesus the Holy Spirit sin rejects your sin. The Bible sin. rejects your sin. Everything in the world is telling you to stop yeah, being a sinner, question. and you it's say, impossible. "It's my nature. I can't stop. I can't help it. I have to keep on sinning." When you come, is 
not your body rejecting sin? Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the point of Jesus, of Jesus dying? dying because we have sinned. Yeah, we have yeah. sinned. Not means, because we have to keep on sinning. Yeah. I, I admit that I've sinned and you've sinned and everyone else sinned. Not so you can keep on sinning though. In 1 John 3, Jesus said, He came to destroy the works of the devil in your life. So, so God wants to, to ha give you victory over sin at all times. And that's part of the point that's of his. A process. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's a process. Can I get a yes or no? No. It, it, you have to live according to the knowledge you have. Now, yeah, yeah. it's process in this sense. If you gain more knowledge, if you gain more knowledge, you have to re readjust. But you have, must be living according to the knowledge you have. But what if you don't even know God's real? Then, like, what, what? Oh, everybody knows God's real. Can I? They may they may not know particularly what he's like altogether. Some people don't know God's name. No, the Bible says otherwise. The Bible says in Romans chapter what if the Bible's 1 wrong? that everybody knows. Just wait a second, man. I'm talking to him. I'll get to you in a second. Be patient. Romans chapter 1 says that everybody knows there's a creator God. Everybody. And everyone has a conscience inside of them with God's law written upon their heart. So they know right from wrong. They have a basic sense of morality and justice, and they know that God exists. They look at creation. They can see a creator behind it. That's common sense. And so if someone will, will strive to seek after that God that they know, basically, that the God of morality and justice and who created everything, God will reveal more knowledge to them. Because God wants all to repent and for all to come to knowledge of the truth. God is omnipresent. God can reveal the truth to people through visions, through dreams, uh, through angels, through Christian preachers, through the Bible, through gospel tracts. And so if God sees someone who really wants to know him genuinely, but they don't have enough knowledge about him to know him particularly and specifically, he'll give them more knowledge. And there's books written about people who've gone through this very thing. I've read them myself, where they have no Christian witness, no Bibles, no gospel tracts, no churches nearby, never heard of Jesus Christ, and he'll appear to them in a vision or dream, an angel will come, I will speak to their heart, and they'll become Christian before they ever meet another Christian. So God cares about all of his, all of his creation, he wants all to be saved universally, everybody, but it, it, it depends on them. Are they really seeking after the God they know according to their knowledge, or are they just putting it aside and say, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to f*** my conscience. I don't want to look into the God who created him. And so God wants every person to repent. It has genuine care and benevolence for all of human kind. Yes, I mean. Just kind of, okay, yes or no. I've accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I and I repent for my sins, but I know I'm going to continually sin for the rest of my life, but I will repent. Am I going to hell? Yes or no? Yes. Unbelievable. You need to repent. Okay, wait, so wait, my, here's my question. Have you, do you sin? No. No, you do not sin? No. Hubris. I've sinned in the past. Listen, I've sinned in the past. I could still sin. Okay? I have free will. Jesus did it. I have temptation. So I could sin. It's always... Okay, so you're married. Listen, listen, listen let, me, let me finish. Let me finish it. Always a temptation to sin. Okay? But I have a choice. It's not a one-time choice I made. I make the same choice every day when I get tempted. So I have to choose not to give in temptation. Every, so there's always a, a possibility for me to sin. My plan and purpose is to never sin again. Okay, so then my question is this. Then why the hell would God send Jesus to die for you? If you don't sin, Why do you use the word hell need, like that? If you don't need Jesus... Are you claiming to be a Christian? Okay, here's my question. Are you claiming to be a Christian? Answer her question. Then why are you using the word hell like that? It's not a cuss word. Don't avoid are the question. I'm not question. avoiding the question. Okay, I want to know why you use the word hell like that. Then ask me this. Why, why did Jesus die for your sin? Yeah, yeah. There's because I have sin. I just answered a little while ago. You asked the same question. I have sinned. You have sinned. It doesn't mean that I have to keep on sinning. Christ didn't die so you can keep on sinning. He died so you can forsake your sin and stop it. God is not giving you laws you can't obey. And you using the word hell like a cuss word is God. That's God's place of judgment. Why are you stoner then? That's God. Because I'm not a Jew living under Jewish law, under Jewish government. Sin, cast the first stone. So that's the in the Jewish stone. context. Jesus talking to Jewish people. That's the law. The Jewish law. The Jewish law. I'm not a Jewish nation. I'm not living in a theocracy. I'm living in America. If you're not a part of the Jewish nation, you shouldn't follow the Ten Commandments either. Then now, should you? That's the moral law of God, which is repeated in the New Testament, the New Covenant, which applies to all people universally of all time. Are you guys Christian? No, I'm. Well, I used to be. I don't know. He's not a Christian. Um, he's not a Christian. Uh, Christian he's a liar. Christian. You're not a Christian. You're a liar. Why is he not a Christian? We've talked to him all day yesterday. Yeah, we, we already examined you. You're not a liar. You've been trying to distract him from the gospel all day, yesterday and today. Did Jesus call people liars? Oh, wait. Sure did. And then to cast every liar into the lake of fire, too, unless you repent. Jesus was a fanatic. Revelation 21.8.
missionary guy. I'll read it. Wait, yeah, what do you say? Uh, First John 5, 3 says that this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. So the commandments God gives you to obey it does are. not say anything about listen you to perfect. Well, what does it mean that the commandments are not burdensome? Are you telling me you can't be perfect because the commandments are too much of a burden to keep? No, not that they're too burdensome, but sometimes you slip up and say things like hell. Oh no, that's not Some, a slip up. No, there are. Sin is not a slip up. It's not a mistake. It's not an oops. Sin is a willful, rebellious choice. If I say and I Jesus said, myself from "Out of your mouth that's comes the overflow saying. of your heart." If I say, I so that coming myself. out of her mouth shows her heart. She needs a new heart. I need a new heart? Yeah, you, God needs can to I cleanse you. you. Can I tell you something? I spend 15 hours a week telling high school kids about Jesus Christ and how he's their savior. Well, you ought to repent tell first me, yourself. Tell me, tell me you ought to repent first heart. yourself. Tell me you ought to stop using your hell as a cuss word. You, want to you, ought, you ought to stop sinning. How are you going to tell other people how to live for Jesus if you're not living for him yourself? How do you know I'm not living for him? You're judging me by saying that That's I'm not right. Living. I'm judging what's come out of your judging mouth. Judging or not. Oh, I'm so sad That's a sin. Right Say it too. Where in the same judgment you know sin? You put Christians to shame. You see it You're a kind of Christian. Right. You're right. Amen. I put it to, put shame. to shame. I want nothing to do with your God Christianity. Your Christianity is not the true Christianity. Your Christianity is a false Christianity. It's a pseudo Christianity. No, 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 the Christianity no, no, no. of the Bible gives you victory over sin, not defeat in sin, not using the word hell as a cuss word and living victory, in sin. We get victory over sin because Jesus died for us. Maybe she knows because, something. You so you keep on sinning and you're really in victory? How do you know so you that keep on sinning, you're really in victory? Is wrong and yours is right. Because she doesn't have victory over sin. But how she doesn't believe you even can correct? have victory over sin. Okay, the you Bible just, teaches. You just the Bible judge says, over. judge not from? that you may not be judged. Keep reading. Keep reading. Oh. The judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. Br bring it on. Judge me by my judgment. I don't care. Keep reading. And with the measure you use, it will be measured. Measure it back to me. I don't care. Keep going. You're a sexual pervert. Everything you I'm not a sexual pervert. Bullshit. God bless you, sinner. <laughs> keep going. Go. Keep reading that left. Your brother's eye. Your brother's eye, but do not notice the log plank in your own eye. Own. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly the speck of your brother's eye. I took the plank out of my eye, and now First, I can see clearly. Take the log out of your I did. Own eye. I did. You still have the sin in your eye. So do you. And so other Christians are saying the sin every day. You have the log of sin in your eye. I took it out, so, and now I'm fit to judge. So because you I took the log out of my eye, and now I can see clearly to the speck out of my other people's eye. You still have the log of sin in your eye. All of you are claiming to be sinners every day. So you have not fit the judge. Because I'm honest. Well, you, that's good, but you need to repent. Stop it. I sure am honest. So God commands the impossible, huh? No, God does not command Matthew 5, 48, Jesus said, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. You just told me he commanded the impossible. You can't be perfect, right? Oh, hey, are you? You got a you, problem. Are you like upset that we're debating this with you? Is this like bothering you? Because you're no. getting, you're, you're yelling at us. Yes, I'm talking loudly. Jesus was angry that he sinned. Oh, now you're stuck, aren't you? So, what, did Jesus sing in the temple course two different times? Turn the temples over, had to whip the cords in his hand. Was he a sinner? No. Oh, Ephesians five says, "Be angry and sin not." So even if I was angry, young lady, you're, you're like a Pharisee trying to catch me in my words. Even if I was angry, it wouldn't mean I had sinned. It wouldn't mean I had sinned. See, she wants to, she's a sinner and wants to bring me down to her level so she can comfort herself in her own sin and justify her own sin. But the fact of the matter is you have no excuse. Everyone who's sinning has no excuse for your sin. And I am not going to give you any justification. I'm going to strip all your excuses away just like God will and leave you, leave you alone with your sin and give it up. Give up your sin. It's not worth going to hell over. What, if, what about the Mormons? What about them? Are they okay? Are they bad? No, they're not okay. Why not? Uh, there's lots of reasons why. Give me one. Joseph Smith's a false prophet. You read his prophecies, they didn't come true. That's the definition of a false prophet. He should have been stoned according to Judaism. Which prophecy? I think this guy's a I don't remember off the top of my head, but you can read them for yourself. There's Doctrine and Covenants. The Pearl of Great Price. You can read, you'll see some false prophecies in there. He had. He also had 33 wives. Nine of them had husbands at the time he married them. He was an adulterer. The Bible said adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why would you follow an adulterer? Uh, you're saying he's an adulterer, right? Like, no, no, he is an adulterer. And, he, and, and before he was involved in starting this religion of Mormonism, he was involved in looking into hats and 
and trying to look for gold. That's, that's sorcery. The Bible condemns that too. So you have you have plenty of reasons right now to reject Mormonism and reject Joseph Smith, your prophet. Do you believe that the God of this universe was a, a human being on another planet at some point in time? I don't know. That's what Mormonism teaches. It's possible, right? No, it is not possible not? because God is spirit and he always has been, always will be. There's no God before him, no God after him. You're saying there was a God before him. Well, if he was a human somewhere, how did he get exalted to God if another God exists? I didn't say he was a human either. Okay, well, you said it's possible. I'm telling you it's not possible. How is it possible? Anything's possible with God. No, you can't. The God won't make a square circle. Theological, impossible. He's fucking God. So you can't make a God before him either. Yeah, you can't. He's fucking God. And you're a filthy potty mouth. You need to repent. You need to repent. Last question. So what verse says gay is immoral? No, homosexual, not gay. He's not wrong to be happy. He's wrong to be a homosexual or a sodomite. First Corinthians. The definition of gay is also homosexual. No, no, that's that's a redefining of it. Uh, First Corinthians six nine and ten. First Corinthians nine and ten says that homosexuals and sodomites will not inherit the kingdom of God. Romans one. So they exchange the natures of the woman for the unnatural of the man, burning their lust for another, committing what is shameful and vile and unnatural. So yes. Isn't there a Leviticus verse? I'm not using the Old Testament. I know you want to go to shrimp and clothing, mixed clothing. I'm not going to the Old Testament. I'm going to the New Testament. Why can you ignore the Old Testament? I'm not ignoring anything. I'm applying things that apply to me. Things given to the Jewish people and their Jewish theocracy, their covenant with God, does not apply to me. Dietary laws, clothing laws, governmental laws, sacrificial laws, none of those apply to me as a New Testament Gentile Christian living in a constitutional republic, America. Wow.